Sometimes the world just needs a hero to help cut through all the noise. Well, now you have two. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to yet another episode of Your Heroes of Noise. I am one half of this dynamic duo. My name is Steve. Hello. Greetings. What's going on, everybody? My name is Dan. The I guess you, I, you could call me the other half as he's putting it here. That's that's how it is now, huh? I'm just always going to be the other fucking half because hey, 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 hey. you're taking the first half. You know hey, what I mean? I didn't say I'm the first half of this. I said I am one half of this. Dynamic. But the one's there, which means it's first. I understand. Here we go. Yeah, it's going to be that kind of a So show can there. I say the second half of this dynamic? Yeah, see, then you just put me second ah. again. You know, that's okay. You know what? I love you, man. How you doing today? You doing good? I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. I'm happy to hear your voice today. I'm just giving you shit today, man. You know, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, episode 174 is upon you. Welcome to Heroes of Noise. Again, I'm Dan, and we are not alone this week. We have a guest. You know, the thing is, Steve, we've been trying to get guests on a lot more this year, and for whatever reason, it just didn't happen. So every time we get one, I feel like it's an extra special guest. And any time that we can talk music with said guest, it's always going to be a special show to me. So, yeah, but, yeah, you know what I mean? So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I think a lot of people that listen to our show know of this person, know of this particular band that he's in. Um, we all kind of work together, you know, we're very synergistic that way. We feed off of each other and we pass on information. The person that I'm talking about today is one Chris Lowe from the band Volk. What is going on, Chris? Uh, hi, I'm Chris, and I'm very intimidated by that introduction. Like, I feel way overhyped. <laughs> uh, I, will, I will say, as I've been saying since 1983, you know, I put the low in expectations. Um, oh, uh, so, so, I like let's that. Keep, let's keep it there. That's good. See, he's got jokes, man. Uh, I've, I've had that joke for a long time. Uh, I'm a dad joke aficionado. Oh, you're in the right spot today. But uh, yeah, I'm so excited to be here, guys. Thank you so much for having me. I uh, I love this community of 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 you know just pop culture nerd podcasts that I, I've I've just kind of uh, fell into randomly. I guess it was like two or three years ago, and just meeting so many folks. I I, don't, I haven't started my own podcast. I don't really know what I would do on a podcast. But uh, I love listening to all you guys, and I love Heroes of Noise. So this is awesome. Thank you, guys. You rock. Thank too. you, sir. And I instantly have an idea for you, by the way. Okay. Maybe I should wait and save it until we get into it. But how about a podcast from the road? Uh, Talking oh, about the road Tales cast. from the Road. That man. would just be like podcast nihilism because I don't – That's <laughs> if you want to get nerdy, like I feel like – because I, I, I remember I just re- – I listened to uh, Brandy Carlisle's uh, autobiography – um a couple months back and and her describing like the jokes get really dark on the road it's like that's really true brandy because like Mm. the jokes just start getting really dark when you're just it's hour seven and you still have to load in and you might get you know a, a sound check but darn it they put a opening band on there so there's we don't get a sound check because we're squished in the middle um uh, I don't know if, if people know what that means. Of just like you can't actually. It's not the most comfortable thing to just show up, turn on your amplifiers, and just start playing. So yeah, it, it's it. Elliot can attest, and I can attest. And now my girlfriend, who's been coming on the road, and you guys will meet her uh, when we play uh, Fresno, or if anybody's coming to these West Coast shows, uh, she's finding out rapidly just like how the dark, the jokes just get really dark because things are just like grim a lot of the time. Sadly. Is this the first time she's going on tour with you? Uh, no, she's she started in August, um, and she came with us on this kind. Of, it was kind of this weird circle between the southeast and Midwest that we just got done uh, with last month. Um, but it's been great. It's great to have another person to to drive and and help out with things, and she's loved it. And it's just kind of a nice way for us to spend time together. Uh, because you know I'll go for away for three weeks and then I arrive home and and I'm completely exhausted. But now she can be exhausted with me. It's great. No more that absence makes the heart grow fonder because you're together. You'll just be sick of each other when you get off the road. Yes, exactly, exactly. She's she's uh, going on a a really like a six month uh, journey through South America next year, uh, starting in around late January. Um, she's l- looking to learn Spanish because she's doing actual important, important work. She just got her graduate degree in uh, social work and she works to work in schools and she wants to work in schools where there's high, uh, Hispanic language use. 
So she's going to go live down there. And it's just something she's always wanted to do. Um, so she wanted, uh, we, we kind of wanted to be able to spend a couple months together uh, doing this so we can get really sick of each other. And then it will be okay when she leaves. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Chris is dating a saint is what you're telling. That's pretty much what we're. I definitely moved up on my thing. She's, uh, I do not deserve Colleen Craddock. I will, I'll put that. She's going to be mad that I used her name on this podcast. <laughs> And she's like sitting in the other room. It's she really can hear good. every word I'm saying. I'm going to be in so much trouble. Which is good. <laughs> I know you'd be like, what did you do? What did you do today? Oh, I practiced. What did you do? Well, I'm saving children. Yeah. Oh. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's, she's awesome. Yeah, she has patience for, 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 for that kind of lifestyle and things like that. I used to be a teacher in another life. And I still have, no- I have, I have nightmares about teaching in Spanish Harlem. Um, still to Whoa. this day. So I, I have to off to anybody who can, who can work in those kind of atmospheres where you are working with, you know, legitimately like struggling individuals and things like, and it is saintly yeah. work and it needs to be paid a lot more and respected a lot more. Listen, that's real. You know, speaking of the teaching thing, I like to do a little homework before we okay. talk to a guest. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well done. Well done. And I got to tell you, man, I think that the story of Volk is a very interesting story to tell, considering how you two met. Yeah. Timing is everything, right? Oh, yeah. So if you don't mind, for the because I know that people that have listened to the show, we've, I've played Welcome to Cashville mm-hmm. before, mm-hmm. and uh, we've got some, some positive responses. So I'm hoping that anyone in the area will come to Fresno mm-hmm. December 2nd to see the show. Yeah. Hit me up if you don't know where. I'll send you the link, something. But we got to get together and see this dude play, along with Elliot. And um, I was just wondering if you can kind of tell me the story of Volk a little bit. Uh, yeah, sure. And also, like, just, like, people coming out. It's really just cool to meet people from, like, the kind of podcast community of just, like, oh, I listen to you all the time. Um, and just have, like, it's happened a couple of times across the country now, like, in Green Bay or Kansas City. People's like, I heard you on this podcast. I'm like, that's so cool. Um, anyway, sorry. I'm the tangent king, as as my girlfriend can tell you. Oh, yeah, again, you're in the right place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Undi- undiagnosed ADHD. Uh, so, Volk, uh, strangely enough... Uh, started out of desperation and kind of not really liking life positions of, of Chris Lowe and Elliot Reich in Berlin, Germany, who came to that city from di- for different reasons. Elliot was there for theater. She went to NYU for theater, and she went and spent her last semester there, uh, finished up and then stayed there, but was kind of just becoming disgruntled with the community there, not really able to break in and do anything. And so she started, she picked up a guitar um, and started writing songs. And then I was kind of in that same vein of like, I never actually really wanted to be a teacher. I just wanted to move to New York City after college. And then I just kind of fell into it and was just kind of doing it for like almost 10 years. And I was in Berlin and realizing I never really actually wanted to do this. And now I'm working at this international school with all these really like insanely rich kids who don't care. And they have like millions of dollars in a trust fund. Um, and all I want to do is create. So I started going to open mics. Elliot started going to open mics and we met at a place called Madame Claude's, which used to be a brothel. Whoa. Um, and we were, we were playing our songs and we was like, Hey, I, I dig your music and it, and a, you know, a kind of like co-writing kind of happened organically. And we were both like, this is all we ever actually really wanted to do. Let's form a band. And we started out just as like a very much like a folk band. Like I played acoustic, she played acoustic, I had play a mandolin. Ellie would be a little crazy with this little stomp board sometimes that we called Fritz <laughs> to give some percussion. And but we always wanted to add like electric guitars and big heavy drums. We just couldn't find anybody to play with us. And uh, also Berlin is not the best place to start a rock band just because when you go over to Europe, you know things are very compact. And there's apartments over clubs. So it's really hard to find a place where you can actually play loud live music. You can't you can right, control you noise. can control the like the sub on a on an EDM song. You can't do that with a kick drum. But we kept on anyways, and that's kinda where we got the name Volk because we were like, Oh, folk music plus voltage, like electric stuff. So Volk. Ah, that's dope. We didn't even think of the wor- German word folk we were like which is stupid because like we were in berlin germany elliot is half german uh reich um she's never she's not well she wasn't born born in germany she was born in san diego but her dad is full german and his family came over um 
But yeah, we didn't even have that in mind, uh, which was always kind of awkward, especially for Germans, because as we found out later, um, and this is where we'll probably, you know, end up having to change the name just accident. Like Hitler was a big fan of that word, unfortunately. Um, uh, really? Yeah. He likes Volkslander and things like that. And Volkswagen, it just means people, people's wagon. It's just like, and if you go to any other country, nobody even notices. It's just weird for older Germans. I'm just going to call myself out right now. I just got, when you said it, the Volk, Volkswagen connection. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. A little slow on the uptake today. No, it's okay. It's okay. I didn't know. That was the thing. I didn't notice it either until I was like at a museum uh, in Berlin. It was about the history of Berlin. And it was just like every other word that that bastard was using. And it was just like, he, he it's like, it, it's sad because there are like liberal folks, mus- or, uh, movements and things like that. And like, Socialism mm-hmm. things. It's just he liked that word. It's like I don't know how I can't think of a modern day interpretation of somebody just taking something benign and making it suck. Oh, like the American flag. I'm sorry, oh, I said no, that. Out loud. Yeah, there, I was. I didn't. I didn't want to get political yet. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> Kevin Shanks lets us get political, but I was like, I better pull out. Wait, that was bad wording. Um, whoa. I mean, you guys, you guys, <laughs> you guys will see like on the road one of my new jackets that I wear. Literally, like just calls out Ted Cruz and calls him a liar. Love it. And it's like sprinted on my jacket. And I was like, we do that, our cover of Snake Farm of Ray Wiley Hubbard. And I talk about how the only good thing for snakes is they eat rats. And then I hold up the shirt and, or I might hold up my jacket like this son of a bitch. Um, Come on. I'm so going to love a good this guest, concert. Steve. Yeah. We've huh? got a good guest. <laughs> I'm going to love this concert. Yeah. I mean, sorry if you're eye rolling right now listening, but yeah. this won't be the show for you. So you can move on to episode yeah. 175 or 173. Uh-huh. We're going to talk real, man, because Chris is our kind of people. Yeah. Well, I mean, I it, that is a, if we're going to get nerdy about like art and music and things like that, there will be some times where you have artists who are of the opinion of like, you shouldn't get political, and that's not the point of art. The point of art is to entertain. And I'm like, fuck that. I'm. I feel like the the point of art is, you know, it's Socrates, it's Oscar Wilde, it's Mark Twain, it's, you know, pushing the envelope of like, you know, of, of punching up, you know, like yes. making society be be, be better. Um, yes. And, There's no question. No question. Yeah. I totally agree with it. I think we've gotten away with it, unfortunately. Because yeah. back in the day, there was pop music, mm-hmm. but then there was movement music. Yeah. And there was a lot of mu- movement music. Yeah. Now it's just all pop and a yes. little kind of like a pop artist will have one movement mm-hmm. song on them. Like, and it's, and it's kind of a, you can take it as a movement yeah. song or you could just be like, we all should love each other and blah, blah, blah. But there are no like power to the people songs. No, not now. anymore. And just I don't like, know what happened. Man. And like, like Rage Against the Machine is just like, what are you? What is going on? You guys only get together when you seem to need money. Like you're not really raising right. so much anymore. Yeah. Um, and you're like, I know, man. Um, That's such a good point. You're right. I mean, I hate to admit that because they were like such a a symbol of that in the '90s. Well, that's 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 you too. That's that's you know Green Day. It's all just uh, it's 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 a weird like horrible irony of just when a good protest song does come out or like what makes a good protest song. I think. Uh, I remember listening to David Byrne on a on a podcast. I can't remember what it was. Broken his record. His book is so good. Broken record. His book is so good. His yeah. broken record with that I can't remember the name of the guy. Uh but uh they actually talk about how like a song like uh Born in the USA. It's such a catchy mm-hmm. song that nobody's actually listening to the actual message um of it. And and it's just like that weird irony of like you do try to make a point, but then it get the message gets lost. Um so true, dude. I also think it's like these days people are a little afraid to speak their minds. Yeah. It's a little easier to get yourself in hot water by doing so. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But yes. I've, uh, you were talking about art and I think it's a great place. I mean, use your platform. You know what I mean? Well, for me, it's just because I'm so uneloquent and can never actually say the points that I want to make of like, you know, c- polio, polio. The reason why you don't know what polio is is because of vaccines, you fucking moron. Very true. <laughs> like, Very true. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> You're t- freaking right. like, tell me the symptoms of smallpox. Ex- why, you know why not? <laughs> because of vaccines. Why are we having this conversation? Exactly. Like, exactly. But I can't no, eloquently totally... make a point anymore. And I, that's a, you know. But you don't have to be eloquent. Yeah. I don't think that ele- at this point, because the thing is, 
I think the other side has been so, you know what, screw it. We're going to be dumb and happy about our dumbness. Yeah. That why do we have to be like, no, let's be smart about our smartness. No! Maybe yeah. we don't have to. Maybe we could be like, no, yeah. you're, you're being you're being an idiot. Well, and you're like, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. I think we'll, we'll probably, like, uh, a lot of, when I'm thinking about the movies we're talking about, like, Dune and Eternals especially, like, why maybe people are struggling with them so much is, like, we are a meme culture. Like, we are... Like, in this digitized culture where everything, like, I need that information within 10 seconds or it is useless to me. Um, yes. Ain't that the truth. And I'm part of it, too. It's just, like, because I was thinking about it, like, watching Dune and Eternals, like, the point I was, or the the, the thought I was having in my, set, in my head was, like, I remember with, I was with my mom in New York City and we were trying to watch Hansel's Messiah. Oh, yeah. Which is like a three or four hour opera. And like, it's not just yeah. that one part that you like of, of the, the main, the main overture that everybody knows. And it's just like, people used to go to this for entertainment. And like, this was mm-hmm. the cool thing to do. It's just like, but grasping that is this was just almost impossible now. And it's just for a certain subset. Unfortunately, like, you know, more privileged parts of society and things like that. And, you know, the sad part is like, speaking of privileged society, like, when we look at something like Hamilton, mm-hmm. which was made for, you know, when in the beginning it was like, hey, you can go see this play for a good price, a hip hop play that you can afford. And now it's unaffordable. Mm. It, it priced the better it got. It's almost like the better things get. It prices the people out that actually made it popular. R- right. Rich people, like, rich what? people ruin everything. Let's just go to that. Like, let's just. <laughs> Let's just, you know, let's call it what it is. The last capitalist we hang will be the one who sells us the rope. Let's just go that far, right? I like that. Uh, this is, you know what, dude? That's a really deep quote. Yeah. Where did that come from? Uh, you know, just reading a lot of Marx and Nietzsche in college. Uh, ah, but, ah, but there it is. But no, just like rich people do ruin everything. Like the Fender Teleca- or Telecaster and the Strat were made by Leo Fender, supposed to be for an affordable everyman. Like, like working class person. And now you can't, if you want an actual USA telly or strat, you're looking to spend over a grand easily. Um, Absolutely. And I, for me, it's, and for me, I'm, first of all, I'll just get a made in Mexico. No question. Yeah. Like when I've picked up the two, since I don't play guitar, when the person was like, oh, but you want to make, I was like, I can't tell the difference. No. These I are can't. the same guitar in my brain. Yeah. Both of my guitars are Korean made, and I love them. So, what 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 brand do you have? I have a the Gretsch Electromatic. If we're gonna start going oh, into Gretsch. the rig, rig rundown, it's it's really like for the the trickery that I do on stage. It's the only guitar, this semi acoustic with these Pacific um, pickups called a Filtertrons that mm-hmm. allow me to do the stuff I'm doing on stage with the amp and pedal trickery. Is that your only guitar? Or you have a few more that you mess with. Uh, that's the only. I mean, I just got a backup one, but it's the exact same guitar. Uh, it's just it's there's there's I have I have the white and gold one and the black and silver one. Um, have you thought about getting sponsored through Gretsch? Since you're a touring musician, I don't really know how to do that. Um, Neither do I. <laughs> I wish but I knew people how to do that. Are not that great are are sponsored. And I'm like, how are they getting sponsored? Uh, the music industry is like. I think, you know, maybe 45% talent and then 55%. No, it's probably, I don't know how to break it down, but most of it is money, money, money. And who do, who do you know who has money in connections? Yes. That's when you big, see somebody big. getting a write-up in a magazine, that's because of money um, most of the time. Dude, I was talking to my mom about this the other day. Mm-hmm. I was like, back in the day when you had artists, Say I had a, a hit song on the radio. Do you know how many amazing artists I had to, like, b- a talented artist that I had to beat out to be on the radio? Yeah. Like, if I made it to the radio, that means I beat out Stevie, James Taylor, Earth, Wind, and Fire to get to number one. Yeah. I had to do that, which is why they sold so many albums. Yeah. It's like, well, it's good music. Yeah. Because you had to be. Now, they're like, I can just I can just kind of make a, a good enough video. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be famous online. I mean, I don't have to be talented. Necessary. Or you just have to. It's have, not a yeah. necessity. You just have to have good enough Instagram knowledge of like fun viral <laughs> videos. Seriously. Like, there's so many times where I'll just like, I don't know if I can name a single song or lyric from this artist, but man, I really like watching them online. That's it. <laughs> that is it. And it's a shame. It's. A, I know. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because I think. Uh, 
the the most talented people I see are the least popular people. Yeah. Like I'm like, how does this guy only have tw- like five thousand subscribers, and he is destroying online? Yeah. But he it doesn't translate into like the people that have twenty million hits are just like, yeah. You know, I'm like they can't even sing, they can't play, yeah. they can't do anything, but they just. Which is why I respect you so much that you've made a you are talented uh, and you've made you've made yourself a career being talented, not bending, doing what you want, touring on your own schedule, uh, doing your own. That's amazing, dude. Well, I mean, when we get into the nitty gritty, it's not. I mean, I, I sort of make Ellie and I sort of make a living off of it partially. We're getting closer to where, like, okay, I I can tour for a month and then I'm going to take a couple weeks off and not have to work when we get back. Um, but like, it's, yeah, it's if I may, yeah. sorry, if I may, I was just wondering, I want, I don't want you to give me like personal mm-hmm. information, of course, but is this a, um, quote unquote, full-time thing for you? Do you have to come back? I know you just say you don't have to work, but are there scenarios where you do have to come back on occasion and work a different job just to, you know, make ends meet? Oh, that's, 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 that is the reality. That is still the reality. After, that is the yeah, reality. Like, okay. I, I think it is, I don't know if I could call a single musician friend currently that i know who just does music there is there is some other thing like i for for lack of a better word am like a maintenance trash guy um it's a long story i don't know if we wanted to get into that of like what that means but basically i just do any work i can find when i'm in nashville elliot was cleaning houses up until recently now she is working uh, at third man, she might not want me telling her personal information. Whoopsie. Um, I can always cut anything out that you need me to just so you know, she won't care. She'll just chide me. Uh, but <laughs> like I, 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 our, our label guy, he, um, he actually might have gotten away from, he, he flips cars. Um, that was his thing. And and I just like met musicians just like, we're, what is it? Like, will work 14 hours a day to not have a job, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Dude, yes. Yes. And it, I, I would say that music is a full-time job because we are constantly, like, if you see content online, if you see a website, if uh, the promotion, the the getting gear ready, songwriting, uh, trying find, to find places to record and things like that, that takes all the time in the world. So I just, I, I left teaching very much for that reason because I was like, you know, it's like, I'm a really bad teacher because I'm focusing way more on this. Like, I could be grading these kids' papers, but I'd rather be writing a song. Or That's or, fair. You yeah. recognized it. And so, you know, just finding grunt work and just stuff that other people don't want to do. Um, so like Absolutely. for like a really long time uh, before COVID, I was like just basically a bonafide trash guy. I worked for this mm-hmm. company here that's like a more organized Airbnb and you have all these houses in Nashville, Tennessee, which is the bachelorette capital of the world. <laughs> um, all these empty houses that people just go and trash. Somebody's got to go take the trash in and out and or Holloway trash that they've made a mess of. And I would just go do that. And it was like surprisingly, sadly, good money. I made more money in one year as basically a trash guy than I ever did as a teacher. It made me really sad. Teachers are unsung heroes, man. Oh, they are. Oh, that's yeah. It's like the hardest job in the world. Uh, probably after being a parent and we don't take care of either of them. Um, if we want to get, get back to the, the political, truth. back to the political world. I mean, we could have with yeah. this last bit. Don't get me started. Oh, I mean, started. we could have, this last bill could have happened mm, and it did not, mm. but we're going to let it go. Can we just say, have a, a, a moment of fuck you-ness from Joe Manchin? <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. And, and cinema. Yeah. And, and cinema. cinema. Yeah. And all the Democrats that folded, but I'm going to let it go. Yeah. I'm going to let it go. I'm just like, I'm terrified of 2024. It's like, what do you guys think oh, is going to happen? it's over. Yeah. You already know it's going to happen. Yeah. It's over. The uh, gerrymandering yeah. has begun. It's over. It's over now. Yeah. And they don't. It, I'm like, do you guys not see it coming around the corner or no? Do you not know how I mean, hard? It seems like you got a party that's falling apart at the seams yeah. right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's oh, so it's infuriating of like after the, the work of like Stacey Abrams and all those other organizers. Yes. Oh, to flip Georgia oh. just to, just to, as a survival, as a survival Jesus, technique. dude. And we have places banning critical race theory from schools. It's like, you fucking morons. They're not teaching that. In, in, in It's not even taught. It's not even yeah. taught. 
And and first, and second of all, can you explain to me what it is? It's like no. Exactly. Uh, but it's message discipline. Yeah. That's something the Republicans yeah, have yeah. is a message yeah. discipline. Where they're like, we are going to say these three letters over and over and over until CNN's like, what is CRT? Yeah. I'm like, oh, here we go. Yeah. Well, you're kind of like what you were saying, like we're in this age or like this this meme age. Yeah. And that's kind of like it's all about keywords and phrases these mm-hmm. days. You know what I mean? Yeah. Woke mob mm-hmm. and all that kind of shit. It's just something that they just keep saying over and over and over again until it just becomes part of of our reality yeah. in some sense. You know what I mean? Or at least some people's yeah. reality. You, you can't. No question. You can't have a nuanced conversation in, in 2021. No. It's impossible. No, not at all. <laughs> and like no. and that's where like a movie like. Eternals or or Dune is gonna suffer because like this is this takes a little bit of time to grasp because like we're literally building a universe here. Yeah, no, no question. I mean, it's it's tough because even with Eternals, yeah, uh, people are like, okay, we don't want thirty minutes of nothing. Mm. You better grab our. But you know what? Marvel kind of did it to themselves. Yeah, because for a while they they built up such a good universe mm-hmm. that they didn't have to do 30 minutes of introduction. Yeah. It could just start blasting off yeah. and you knew, oh, I know what happened in the last movie. So as soon as the credits are done, explosions. We're ready to rock and roll. You're yeah, like, it was oh, all cool. familiar faces. Yeah, yeah we already know. We know yeah. what's going on. I, no need yeah. for exposition. I think if I'm going to take the devil's advocate point or like maybe what Kevin Feige is hopefully thinking, and this is going to be a worse, horrible analogy, but I remember when Cole... Pl- <laughs> all right. Coldplay, let me just praise, I am going to bring uh-huh. up Coldplay. They were like on their like fourth album and they were like, we made all these poppy songs because all we ever wanted to do was sound like Radiohead. And now we're just going to make these really weird songs because that's all we ever wanted to do in the first place. Um, and hmm. I would like to think that Marvel and Kevin Feige probably just think, okay, we have done the popcorn stuff. Uh, and we have a formula that people literally call the Marvel playbook. We've already done that, so now we want to start doing more experimental things, which I like. Like, you know what? So what if fucking Eternals flops? We still have like it's 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 weird because uh, again in the meme culture we forget Marvel has the number one movie of all time. Exactly. So it's like who cares? We're gonna try to experiment, and like I think it's like I think the three sh- uh, like Wandavision. And Loki, and what if we're like very experimental shows, and maybe it wasn't a like it didn't hit, but at least they're trying something new, which is cool. And they like are. all the stuff that they they just announced yesterday, with uh, like Miss Marvel and She Hulk, and like She Hulk mm-hmm. is apparently going to be a comedy law show. It's like cool. Um, maybe it Moon may, yeah, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but at least they have that that space, you know. Even though I did hear that Disney's in trouble, uh, but. At least Marvel. Really? What, what do you mean? Well, supposedly Disney's might be in trouble stock-wise. I don't know. I don't ask me to explain stocks. Oh boy! Don't expi- ask me to explain Disney or stock world things like that. It was some article I didn't even read. I saw the headline because I exist in meme culture. Um, oh, dude, so do I. Uh, if, the, if the headline says a thing, I'm just like I pretty much read the article. Yeah, <laughs> I sold all my Disney stock for Doge, so I'm the last person you want to ask. Oh, about. Doge. <laughs> uh, I have. I got some Bitcoin and Doge, and I got the Tesla. Even though I think Elon Musk is an evil son of a bitch, um, he is. He's he's um, he's, he's going to take over the. But world. again, another meme quote for you. Uh, what is it? Uh, moral consumption is impossible in late stage capitalism. So. Uh, mm. it's like like any any like the good place analyzed that on that show it's like there's literally no action you can take that isn't morally compromised compromised at this point like you're still affecting I love something. that show yeah. oh that show was great I, I love Wonderful that show, show dude I, I loved it so much I didn't watch the last season because I didn't want it to end oh man because I know if I watch oh, it in my man. brain it's like a Schrodinger cat thing oh. it hasn't ended yet if I haven't watched yeah. it yeah uh, such a good yeah such an amazing it's show it's so good dude that first that I'm not gonna ruin it for Dan, but that first season twist at the end mm-hmm. where you're like, oh my yeah. god, yeah, yeah, genius, and no one talks about yeah. that twist enough where it's like, oh, this isn't even the show I was watching. Yeah. yeah, I hate to set us back. I'm sorry, but when you said the name of the show, you broke up, so I don't know. What oh, 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 me? The good, oh the good place. Sorry. Okay. All right. All right. We're good now. We're I'm I'm back in okay. the in the conversation. Oh, it's yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. And and. It's a fan. I love that quote saying, "Look, late stage. There's no. There's not. 
any such thing as moral moral like you can't purchase anything morally in late, late, yeah. late stage capitalism and i don't know like before my sister and i were like oh it's about to be a revolution now we're like you know what it might not uh. it might just be the fall of demo- it just might be over with and we might not survive like my generation may be long gone by the time any revolution yeah happens because people are i think it's just enough people that are making it by by the skin of their teeth. It's just enough to just squash a revolution. Yeah. Because they're making it. I mean, we may not be yeah. making it well, but you're making it. And that's all that matters. Uh, another meme culture thing, but and like somebody can probably disprove it. Like, but I saw one thing was like, there's more wealth disparity now than there was during the French Revolution. And, I wouldn't be surprised. And like, I don't know how many people remember what happened in the French Revolution. Uh, no question. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how much does the... I mean, we didn't have people like Jeff Bezos. He's about to be a trillion. There's not economic models for how rich the rich are. (laughs) For real. There's nothing we've seen like this where it's just like the amount. It just never happened. Yeah, Because people think, oh, he has 120 or 70 billion dollars. And we just say it until somebody breaks it down and be like, do you know how much money if you made a million dollars a day? Mm -hmm. Do you know how long it would take to get to? Then you're like, oh, you you had to have been saving from like the beginning of like recorded history or something like that. It's insane. And you're still not there. It's just like uh, there's an awesome uh, podcast I love listening to called Behind the Bastards. I don't know if you guys. I love that podcast is, dude it's a great podcast i can only listen to it in spurts because i just get into such a nihilistic oh, vacuum but it was just like white supremacy is the greatest ponzi scheme of all time because it's exactly what f scott fitzgerald said every american is just this temporarily embarrassed millionaire like you have all these people who just like if i just keep going along with these yes, politicians yes. say who are obviously being paid by these billionaires then it's okay. And like, I will get mad about a tax increase and not listen to the part where it's, this is only going to affect the guy with the billions of dollars. And he's still going to be able to afford two yachts, even after we tax him. No question. Yeah. No question. It's here's the thing. If I were, here's what I believe. I believe if I could show people the future and show them that they're never going to be a millionaire, then they'd be like, Oh, well then screw them. Yeah. If I could show them, Oh, you think I don't want, I don't want to tax the rich because I might be there one day. I might be a millionaire one day. If I were able to show them, you will never be a millionaire. Yeah. Then they'd be like, oh, I oh, mean, well, then, because you think yeah. you're going to hop that bridge one day and you don't want to be taxed like Again, that. Again, existing in that thing, it's like I am still of that, like my my last card to play of like achieving like economic stability is like I need to sell a, a song for sync licensing to some movie or something like that that can get me out of the, the, the Ponzi scheme that was an ed, like a college education. Uh-huh. Um, uh huh. And and just why did my dad give me a credit card when I was nineteen? Why did that? Why did we make that decision? Um. Uh. But not to get we all do yeah. it. But I mean, I we all. But sync licensing is a. I'm surprised you're not doing that. Like your music is perfect for sync licensing. I it's it's the last frontier of of understanding. Like I can I know how to book a show. I semi know. Like the nuts and bolts of promoting it, which most of the time takes money and time. Uh, uh-huh. uh, I don't know how to get into the sync licensing world. I don't. I think it's a know you know thing. It is very much a know you know. Like like okay, all you got to do is like look up the music supervisor from the the credits reel, and then like what? I go to LinkedIn and I like. Cold That's test. what they yeah. say, yeah. and it's not true. It's just not true. Yeah. They're like, okay, you just research every music supervisor from your favorite show that matches up the music that you do. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, but you're going to email them, and they're going to be like, yeah, you don't cold email me. I yeah. don't know who you are. Yeah. It's about knowing, like, these people forget that they rub shoulders. Yeah. Like, their manager rubs shoulders with these people. That's how you yeah. got on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's sync licensing, your music, dude. Uh, yeah. All it's going to take is one person to hear the right person to hear your music. You're on a movie. I mean, I've I been promise. saying it. I've been saying it for ever since we started the band, guys. I am actively looking to sell out. Uh, I will sell. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if Coca Cola wants to give me thirty thousand dollars for for my song, and I don't ever even have to own the rights to that song ever again. I will be a happy man. 
Um, like <laughs> it doesn't mean you have to be a multimillionaire, but you got to eat. Yeah, yeah. I you don't know need, I mean? no. I have no interest in being a multimillionaire. I don't want to be one of those artists at this point. I don't want to be like the point where you have to essentially have a group of people who help you exist through the day of like. Yeah, I don't, you have a team. I don't. I don't you have wanna, your own no, team. I, that weirds me out. I don't want to do that. I want to still be able to. I mean, I feel like the success. Like if I was being like dream level. Uh, would be like a tool or the band tool. I love that's my favorite band ever. I know everybody likes this. Oh, oh love wow! Them. Yeah, love them. I did not expect that. Love it. I feel like if if you pay attention to the drop D songs of the Volk songs, you can hear me just trying to rip off Adam Jones. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, like incredible like, guitar player. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They're all like um, um, uh, Adam uh, 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 Dan Carey has a, a master's in percussion from Kansas. Uh, he's insane. Uh, but like most of them, maybe Maynard can't anymore after like a perfect circle, but they can pretty much just like walk into a grocery store and nobody knows who they are. Um, but you still get to play these huge festivals and shows and things like that and, and feed the ego and things like that. Um, that would be cool. So that, for me. that would be your ideal. You want to be able to feel okay. I don't, I, but I don't think I would need them. I don't want a million dollars. I don't. I just want, I would be happy with my little house that I have here in Nashville that's falling apart. But, you know, I don't, I just want to not have to worry about when we get off the road. As I said earlier, if we got off the road and I have enough money to pay the rent and pay the bills. I will be happy at this point. Cause I think that's, that's the dream. And that's really like, I think that is the reality for probably 99.9% of most musicians in how. That's a whole another can of words of how fractured the music industry is now. Like if we're getting into the whole, because streaming in, in the internet and Napster, and as Prince said, internet, the internet is broken. Like the music industry had lost its traditional ways of actually making money with vinyls and CDs and things like that. There is no actual way to recoup the cost of, of recording um, because 0.005 of, of a cent for every stream that you get off of Spotify isn't going to really pay the bills. So, that is so freaking true. Yeah. Dude. It changed the game. Yeah. That's why you, it, like when people say when they're like, Oh, uh, such and such outsold or like they'll say, um, uh, someone sold 30 million rec or 15 million catching up to thriller. Yeah. I'm like, what you got to understand is when thriller sold 25 million copies, people walked to the warehouse. Yeah. And purchased it, yeah, twenty five million times. Yeah, that's an insane number when you think about. Yeah. It. Like Bruce Springsteen selling twenty million. Like people went to the store mm -hmm. and bought that. Now it's like, oh, I'll just download it, and they consider that a sell. Yeah, I'm like, that's not really a a sell so much. You didn't have to change your day. Yeah. Um, Back in the day, to buy an album, you had to change your day yeah. to go to the store yeah. to get yeah. it. Like Ed Sheeran having a billion streams or whatever—that's that's pretty good money. <laughs> but like, oh yeah, like I think uh, I think the most we have on one of our songs is something like maybe fifteen thousand streams or something like that. And that's like that's a lot. That's, dude. But it's that's it's only like it's like only a hundred dollars or something like that. It's something. Where, it's still a lot of spins. Though. Yeah, yeah. We're getting paid an exposure. And that means you got your business together. Yeah. A lot of people don't have their business together. They're mm -hmm. like, why am I not getting my 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 uh, money from it? Mm -hmm. You're like, yo, all that paperwork you have to do on the back from ASCAP and BMI. And yeah. It's, they almost make it purposefully hard for an independent to do this mm -hmm. instead oh, yeah. of being like, well, if you – with a record company, they have people that just do it for you. Yeah. We'll get that business together for you. As an independent, you have to make sure that you're – you know, be like, oh, what's mm -hmm. the difference between publishing and copyright? They're like, I don't know. <laughs> How am I supposed? I have to have a law degree now oh, to yeah. be independent. Yeah, it's almost <laughs> if it's, it's, it's intentionally set up this way to be confusing. Interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's almost like they, they purposely make it entirely too hard to just be independent. Which is why I get why some of my friends I'm like, "Hey, who do you have a publishing through?" Nobody. I just record, I put it out, and then I go on a little tiny tour. I'm like, I get it. Yeah, dude. I get it because you don't care. Yeah, you're done. You're like, I, I don't care. Yeah, I just you know I'll get money at the door. Yeah, I'm like okay, it's it's really. I got yeah. sorry. I have a question for both of you actually. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I, I just I'm curious about something. I hear what you're saying, and I understand how you say that. You know, at the end of the day, you just want to have a place of your own to live and just you know keep the roof over your head and all of that. But when it comes down to it, 
are you more, and I'm talking to both of you, are you more satisfied with say the number of listens that you get and fans that you pick up versus, you know, how you said uh, it was like a hundred dollar earning that you got there. What weighs more to you? You know what I'm saying? Like, are you happy that you made a little bit of money off of that? Are you more, is it more about like getting your music out there and being known and being loved as a band or an artist? Well, that's the curse of the musician. I think uh, I was having a, a conversation with a, a music buddy last night about this of just, of because a musician we would i would gladly play for free i i mean i i like that's what that's what the greatest job is it's just like you're just doing it because of the love of it um but that's exploited to the nth degree it's been exploited on broadway here in nashville where people just play for tips and then it 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 sinks into all the venues where like why would i pay this band a thousand dollars if this other band who may be not as great as y'all but it, they're doing covers and that's all anybody wants to hear anymore anyways. And I'll just pay them, you know, 300 or 400. And it's just, it's a market thing. It's like exactly what the, the thing with streaming. Uh, it's, it's going to that on the big level. Why pay $25 for a vinyl or a CD when I can get this for free? And it just lowers the value of the market. And, and, yeah. and the, so that's exploited. And yes, the, the, the the answer to the question is, yeah, I would do it for free and I'll still do it and I'll continue to do it because, you know, uh, world kind of seems to be coming to an end and I just want to have something to do until the world ends and I'm not going to do it doing something I hate. <laughs> That's a great answer, yeah. man. I Dude, I, I totally, I think that the dream for me is like you write a song. I remember I was <clears throat> watching a video of Paul McCartney. He was doing um, All My Lovin' mm -hmm. and a guy in the crowd was crying. Yeah. And 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 you're like, oh, because I transported him back to where he originally heard this song. Mm -hmm. And it is such a timestamp in his life. So if I'm performing in front of four people and one of them is crying and they're like, because I remember when I heard that, or it was the day before I got married, or this is I'm like, oh, I'm happy. I'm good. Because my music is literally a timestamp in your life. Mm -hmm. So that you can be like, I don't know what year that happened, but I remember that that song was the year that this happened. So whatever whatever year that song came out, that's when that happened to me. Yeah. Because that's the song I listened to. It just transports you to another. And I'm like, you know what, dude? That's the dream, you know? Because, mm -hmm. you know, when you listen to these artists that create these, these, these songs, it's like, they don't, nowadays we're worried about mastering. Mm -hmm. We're worried about engine, you know, all these things. Oh, is the mix right? Yeah. I'm like, let me tell you something. Yesterday, if he didn't have any mixing on it, mm -hmm. it was just him and the guitar. It would still be a great song because it's a great song. If Stevie yeah. Wonder sang lately, just straight up piano and him, no mixing. A great song is a great song. Joni it, Mitchell, if she yeah. just sang Help Me, yeah, it's a great song. If you have to do, oh, yeah, this is the song right now, but wait till I master it, though. I'm like, well, then it's not a great song. Yeah. If, you're, if you, you got to wait for me to hear it, it mastered, <laughs> it's not a great yeah. song. I could tell you if it's a good song right now. Yeah. It's a great song. Any, any, you know? any drum track of an ACDC song in isolation. It's just like, wow, this sounds like it's absolute, good. or it's if like, if you're focusing on the mastering and mixing, it's like, this sounds like absolute shit, but Holy crap in the context of those songs, because it's just a great song. It's awesome. Like you don't, you don't think about it. Like, it's like the quality of it or whatever. Um, no, or the sound quality. I mean, it's, no, and it's the perfect type of drumming for that yes, band too. I yes. mean, it's, it's a huge part of the ACDC yeah, sound. Yeah. I mean, if you listen, like even listen to, uh, listen to the original like Beatles mm -hmm, albums. Mm -hmm. It's it's um reverb everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like it's almost as if you're like, oh, you guys just didn't care how this was gonna be bouncing everywhere. Yeah. The Beach Boys reverb all yeah. over the place. Yeah. It would drive an engineer today out of his freaking mind. Yeah. Oh yeah. But they didn't care. They're like, yeah, it's just a good song's gonna be a good song. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're right. If you if you heard it. Like when you hear the, the the vocals by themselves, you're like, dude, it sounds like they're in a, a bathroom. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter though. We yeah. were just like, it's a great song. So he, who cares? I would even say uh, uh, nowadays, it's uh, uh, my son made me listen to mm -hmm. him. And I was like, I was, I just don't like current music. But he said, listen to 24 Karat Magic. I said, sure, why not? And I listened to it. I was like, oh, this song with, if it wasn't mastered, I'd be like, oh, it's going to be a hit. Yeah. Because it's just, the the music together yeah. is good. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why don't more artists just say, you know what? Is the music good? How about we don't pay 15 grand for mastering? Then? Yeah. 
Let's just put it out because the only person that hears the difference in mastering is the artist and the engineer. Yeah. The people that are listening to it in their freaking ear pods, we can't tell a yeah. difference. <laughs> I mean that's we I mean that that was one thing that we had to credit our label with Romanus Records. Uh, his guy named Chris Banta. I don't know if you guys seen the the vinyl that we sell. It's like that this Willy Wonka weird looking oh, shit. Um, I was gonna bring it up, man. Yeah. That is a beautiful vinyl. The uh, the the disc with the cash yeah, in it yeah. is fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's like his philosophy that he taught us of just like and, and you like if you are paying attention to the big labels, they're not putting that much money into the actual recording it's actual the actual promotion like we just we figured out of like we could and we did that with our first ep we you know we rate we did a crowdfunder and raised five thousand dollars to record on two inch analog tape and That's all that awesome. stuff but it's like i don't uh, i mean it's fine but it's just like the next one we did we were introduced to this uh a sound guy who actually works more with like hip-hop and uh, uh death metal bands um, mm-hmm. He's just like, this guy will just make you sound huge. This is what you're trying to to do. And he was charging us like just $16 an hour. And we recorded in this like over a cup, like one or two days and spent like $800. Um, and it's sad that I'm just focused on money, stuff like this and things like that. It's, it's, it, yeah, it, it, yeah. But it's just like, just saying, like again, with the units, like if I am only getting streams 0. 0.005 and I want to actually be focusing on the vinyls and things like that. And that's why we do the arts artistic styles and have like the cash filled one or a honey filled one Mm -hmm. is because they're pieces Mm -hmm. of art that people can collect and we can actually make money on that and i was going to make that point earlier like anybody listening if you actually really i know it's tossed around so much like if you do want to support an artist in any way don't go listen or you can listen to on spotify but like just go buy a t-shirt go buy the cd or something like that because that gets them so much more money or go see them live like go still do that live show Yes, um, yes. And it, have you seen a documentary called Somewhere in the Middle? I have not. It's about four artists, an actress, mm-hmm. a nor- like a, like a uh, what do you call it when you make things out of paper? Uh, 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 origami? Yes, yeah. um, but he does it on mass scale. Whoa. And then there's two, mu- two musicians. Mm-hmm. And what they are is they're not household names, but mm-hmm. they're making a living doing mm-hmm. their art. Mm-hmm. And one dude that's a musician. He goes to, uh, he said, I do, you know, he does co- cafe shows, but he makes a living. Mm-hmm. And one guy comes up to him while he's buying his shirt after the show. And he's like, dude, I love your show. One day I believe you're going to make it. Yeah. And the guy was like, wait, didn't you pay to see me just now? Yeah. <laughs> I did. But in people's brains, they're like, you haven't made it yet. Yeah. Until you're like at Madison Square Garden. Okay. And he's like, it's, you just paid money to see such me. Such a backhanded compliment. Exactly. <laughs> It's such a hard, like, we, like, it's all these, like, weird existences that we have stacked on. We have the meme culture, but we have also this obsessed with fame culture, too. Of just, like, you are not successful unless you are playing in front of, you know, Nissan Stadium here in Nashville, Tennessee to, like, 100,000 people. Um, Exactly. It's so, I'm like, you did just pay to see me, right? You just paid my bills. Like, that's a success. Exactly. Like, but it's just but like, as I said, we're going back to the thing of like, are you okay with that existence of like, you know, you're only getting this so much from Spotify and things like that. But is that is that good enough? It's just like, it's the artist, like, it's like this horrible duality thing of, I do just want to create for myself, but I do need a vindication of others to tell me that it's good. Weird thing. Yeah. And like one show yeah. can be, like I would rather play to four people who actually really are into it than a a freaking hard rock cafe with a bunch of tourists who don't give a shit about what's going on. Um, I would ha- take that any day of just like in it in like art. Just get philo- philosophical about it in the moment. It's probably wrong, but it's like almost art is really just about connection. And like to have that connection <laughs> yes. with the person's like I am actually able to affect you with this thing I created, and that's awesome. That's what I love about Billy Joel. Mm-hmm. He doesn't actually give out like free yep, seats yep. to just like the industry people. Yeah. It's for people mm-hmm. that actually care. He'll actually send people into the stands with the nosebleeds and bring them yeah. down so that way they can connect with them better. And I think that's so mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. That to me personally, now, I'm not a, a musician that performs mm-hmm. or anything like that. I mean, I used to play drums, mm-hmm. but it's like to me, I never ever 
considered myself to ever be in any situation where I would be making an, a shit ton of money or something like that. But it was always whenever I played live yeah. or just played or just connecting with people musically, that's the reward for it's me. It's a dopamine hit. You know? It's a dopamine hit to be for like sure. if you are the drummer at the house party and it's you're not getting paid or anything. You're just jamming and there's not even a bass player. It's just this garage thing and you're just jamming with your friend and there's all these people around just, you know, drinking and having a good time. Like, that's awesome. That's, and, you know, and one thing uh, before we move on, I think also with the connection, it's so, it was so much easier to connect with like a Billy Joe song because mm -hmm. back in the day, they would play songs like Just the Way You Are. Mm -hmm. Today, so it helped you. You're like, since it was so uh, massively played, people do have a connection mm -hmm. to that song because they heard it no matter what in, in a time where they were like, oh, I remember I listened to this song when we were driving down the, oh, I remember I listened to this song because it was everywhere. Now, Adjust the Way You Are would not be on the radio. There was a, there was, It yeah. just wouldn't make yeah, it. No. There, there, there was an apparatus for it. And like, there's a great YouTube video of, uh, of uh, oh gosh, why am I blanking on his name? I'm going to get critiqued so bad. He has the mustache, the handlebar mustache, great guitar player. Amazing. Uh, oh, Jim, not, not Jim Croce. Uh, uh, no, not Jim Croce. Uh, it's Cat Stevens? No, uh, he was a weird dude. Frank Zappa. Frank Zappa. Um, oh. And he's like, he's just like waxing eloquent of like, when the music industry first started, you just had these like uber rich dudes who just saw like, all right, I see something that I can sell. Go create whatever you want to. And, and I'll make money off. And they didn't really concern themselves with what actually was being created. It's like, as long as you make like one thing, like the, the first song hooky enough, like for that one unit of a vinyl, cool, go here's, here's that, here's all that money. And, but then like the music industry change where you got more execs of like, Oh, I need to influence this. And it needs to be like this algorithm thing of like, and, and we, we can definitely get in that nerdiness of like pop music, like modern pop music. Like when you listen to, Something like a Taylor Swift, like none of the music stands out. It's all compressed in the middle. Like if there's a guitar solo, you're not even going to uh, acknowledge it probably because it's no. so been so formatted and so formulaic. Like this is the, <laughs> the bare median of what everybody will like. That is essentially your definition of modern day pop music. And you can hear it like if you go back to the 80s where everybody was on cocaine and you're like, man, that drum is hitting. That is slapping <laughs> <laughs> because because so nobody was fucking with us. Like that just sounds good in my ear. Or it's like like when you're listening to like the synths of the '80s. And I love I I'll, I'll, I like I love that. And I think that that's why I feel like somebody. So I like Tool, but I also like the artist Robin. Um, and I feel like the reason why I she is not Robin, yeah, and she's still around. She's still awesome. She got even more like almost EDM synthy. Um, than she was in the 90s of like that was like very like pop music the stuff she was doing in the 90s when she was young yeah but then it's almost like a callback to like when in rome and cindy lopper and like the synths really like are high and like hits you hard and i feel like that's a big reason why she's not like in that Katy perry taylor swift uh category because those are just so safe um, no, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You're totally right. And it's tough because um, even talking about Rob, you know, I haven't heard her. I hadn't heard her name since the 90s. Yeah. It's been a minute. Yeah. Since it's I heard been Robin, a freaking minute. Or, since I didn't even know she was still recording. Like, or if you just go like with rock, modern rock now, like, you know, except, except for maybe the exception of like Royal Blood, um, all the guitar is just so, so in the middle and just nothing stands out and nobody's like do any like i don't know that's a whole different discussion of like what with rock music what it is doing now and just essentially the question the answer that it has is like let's just get a band that sounds exactly like this band from 30 years ago and dresses like that's them it. and looks like them uh yep and and essentially just turn a led zeppelin riff backwards and and that's I know that's, who you're that's talking about. Uh, yeah <laughs> oh yeah uh we'll get on well yeah it, no it, it's funny because now thinking about it uh, remember there was a time where like on Beat It, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, you know who we should bring in? We should get Van Halen. Yeah. And he, yeah. We should get him to do the the the, the riff. Mm -hmm. Because he sounded unique. Yeah. And later on, Michael got slashed because he sounded unique. Yeah. Now there is no pop song featuring this guitarist. No. Because they're like, yeah. all of them sound the same. Who cares? A bunch yeah. of wolf mothers and brother <laughs> Van Fleet. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's like, I mean, 
it's sad to be playing in essentially what is a dead genre um and hoping like to 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 break through hoping that maybe the 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 uh the wheel will spin back around i'm not sure if it ever will um uh i don't know where i was going with that point I just got lost well, in I just, nihilism. I, 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 <laughs> will. I think- if I may, though, on that note, we've talked about this before, Steve, but I'm I'm curious what Chris thinks. And I don't. Obviously, this isn't a um, this isn't an original question, but I'm going somewhere with it. Do you think rock is dead right now? Uh, no, because uh, Elliot will will has definitely corrected me on this point. Like the thing is that that any innovators in rock right now are not being pushed. Rock, I think, is mm. very much stuck. Like if an alien came to Earth right now and listened to a modern rock radio, they would think that the only four bands existed were four bands from the 90s, probably like Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, and like Axel, or, or uh, Guns N' Roses, and that was it. Mm. Because those people who are, like the, the, the apparatuses, the radio, and things they've been pushing are just pay, pushing, like, it's like I always make the joke when we're in the car listening to radio, it's like, the best new rock from 30 years ago. Um, and anything yeah. modern is just like, is just trying to fit in in other genres almost. I feel like the big reason why hip hop is king and rightfully so is because there's innovation. That's true. Like, and like, and true artistry being pushed. Whereas yeah, right. rock. Kendrick yeah. is an artist. Yes. Yeah, you're right. You're Where right. rock is, there's the, 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 the gears and the, the old, the, the, the bald, you know, the bald uh, suits are just not pushing anything that would be, and the thing is that they, I don't think they understand, or if, I, if I'm not in the room and I don't understand business, I don't feel like they understand the uh, counterintuitive things. Like you have to have something that sounds completely different and is going completely against the grain. Like we can't have a Prince now. We can't have a David Bowie who would be allowed to do just some weird ass shit and then yes. put millions yeah. of dollars behind that so everybody hears it. You're right. See, this is where I'm going. It's like it's like you when you you talk about Prince, you talk about David Bowie. Mm-hmm. I mean, hell, you can even bring in throw in Frank Zappa into the yeah. mix. You know, you had these innovators, and I always referred to them as like rock heroes. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, we yeah, have yeah. rock heroes that have, that have helped change the plane of music, and I just don't feel like we have any of that right now. I was going to ask you, do you feel like there's anyone right now that's on the verge of changing music? I don't feel it's there personally. No, I don't. I mean, I don't know them. I would like to think that it's folk, but probably not. Yeah, hey, <laughs> you just never know, bro. But no, no. Um, but that would, I mean, as I said, I'm looking to sell out. Who, who does, is there anyone? It's going to be Is folk. there anyone else to sell out to? That'd be cool. Uh, <laughs> now, I always make the, except, you know, when we go play like unofficial shows at South by Southwest, I'll just make that joke. It's like, who do I sell out to? Is there anyone else left to sell out to? Is that still a thing? Dude, you played <laughs> South by? That's huge. But not, not, not official. Not official yet. We were going to play an still? official showcase. Then COVID happened. Uh, we were literally driving oh. to Texas to play that showcase, and then everything shut down for a year. Oh, freaking COVID! Yeah. Oh, but you know it's it's funny because back in the day, as we all know, like for every like hair bands, mm-hmm. Metallica, uh, Prince, Michael, these guys made so much money mm-hmm. that they paid for the downstream in their record label. Yeah. Like they, a lot of these, the reason they existed so that a bunch of these little bands that ended up blowing up yeah. later existed yeah. because oh, yeah. they funded yeah. Yeah. these peoples. So, so your, your first album didn't have to hit yeah. 5 million copies. They're like, oh, we're fine. Yeah. You just make an, now that doesn't work like mm-hmm. that because of streaming. Nothing can fund yeah. downstream uh, artists. That's what that sucks. Sturgill Simpson talks about that of like with his third album, uh, not meta modern, but the the next one, Sailor Guys of the Galaxy, is like I literally just took out a huge loan from Columbia, and the only reason they were willing to pay for it was because Bruno Mars sold tons and tons. That's of, huge, yeah. <laughs> and it's like he, I was like, I know that this will never recoup what it actually cost, but I'm just doing it because the, the there's an actual supplement to the art, and that's that's just like the folly of capitalism. Like if we could be more like Europe, where we, they fund the arts. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, and they like, well, you know, you can get grants to write albums or go on tours. Like literally you just, I don't know. The last, the last bastion for American is, is literally just to get synced. And then you, you get that huge payday and then you can money makes money and you can put a lot of promo, uh, behind your story as a band or whatever, and then start to get traction with that. 
Um, if that makes any I, sense. I don't know if I'm explaining myself very well. Uh, no, it totally does. You know, I would say that we would see a lot more artists and a lot more music and a lot more creativity and a lot more people breaking through and changing the game if we had a universal basic income. Oh, yeah. If people didn't say, I have to do this to eat. Yeah. If that wasn't a case, all of a sudden people would be like, well, I can do this. Mm-hmm. I'll ma- I'm not going to be rich right now, but at least I could just sit at home, work on my art and just do this thing. That would be wonderful. Instead of people being like, I want to be a musician, but I'm going to be an aerospace engineer because it has all this. It's 90% guaranteed higher rate. Yeah. And I guess I'll do this yeah. thing. Be like, well, what if the next prince just decided to be an engineer because he was like, I can't afford He's to like, just ah, be, like you know, I can't play the guitar till my hands bleed because I got to go to work. Yeah. For all his ga- that's yeah, for all his gaffes lately, like Andrew Yang, he did introduce me to that. I was like, yeah, UBI totally makes sense. Like Jeff Bezos doesn't need to be sending himself into a dick rocket to go spend 10 minutes no. in the uh, outer atmosphere. Like we could literally, no. you could literally, it's not, it isn't just art. I think though, and the point you're making, like we could have the next prince, but like you could have people the next person who could cure cancer or create a, an app that exactly. could do I, I, it's a vague idea but like do so much wonderful star trek level shit it's just the the yes. human mind is wasted on like just the the monotonous shit of like because you know the billionaires want to keep their massive un, unfair slice of the pie don't let things like automation which is happening anyways like you're just accepting automation like the reason why jobs are going away is because a fucking robot can do the work of 20 people and then you only need one person looking over the robot of doing that thing um yes yes and yes like we oscar wilde was talking about this in like the 1880s of like this is the cool thing about like technology it's supposed to be freeing us but like the universe is that we're fucking in the matrix but we're not in a cool ass simulation we just I have to, you know, work for seven twenty five for bullshit, and uh, it's insane, dude. Yeah, it's insane. like literally the Matrix it's, would it's... be a better existence than this one right here, almost. <laughs> 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 we are in, and I don't think, like you said, are we in late stage capitalism? I don't think so. What if it goes further? Uh, like late, late, late. You're like, well, we're screwed. Yeah, I don't. I mean, just. I mean, I wouldn't have thought twenty years ago we were going to see a trillionaire. No. No. I would not no, have thought no, no, that. No, no, no. I would think, like, we're not going to get that far, are we? Yes, we no, are. Uh, I mean, idiocracy would <laughs> yes. be almost a, 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 a better multiverse situation. I mean, situation. we almost live that yeah. much. That's what we're living in right yeah. now, man. That we almost live that. If somebody would have stormed the Capitol in idiocracy and then been like, anyway, everything's fine, we would have been like, oh, come on. Well, that just uh, and the, like the fact that the, like 11 people who were involved in that just got elected to public office, like, how scary is that? That's dude? fucking like Munich, like like. <laughs> what I can't remember the name of Hitler's little parade thing. That's like that's fucking yeah, Weimar dude. Republic shit. <laughs> we're we're on our way. Like democracy had an interesting run. Yeah, it had a good run, you know. But that's why I'm like, man, maybe the arts save us. Maybe, maybe the power movement music saves. Well, that's maybe. Yeah, at the end of the day, that's what I want. I think I don't. I know. Most of our or like the songs that we play live now aren't really towards that. I make myself feel better, like just quoting Stan Lee when he was thinking about like, oh, I don't really write important philosophical novels. But then he was told by once by fans like, you just help me get through the day. Um, And that's important in itself. But like, I think high art for me, I think, is one that forces people to like that's Huckleberry Finn, where it shows a mirror on society's like you need to correct course. Like that is supposed, that is the privilege and the That's curse right. of an artist. Like you live outside of society yeah. to help steer society to be better. You know, no, no, you're literally, I, I, I totally agree. We are eternals. Uh, 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 from the movies. Oh, yeah. snap. You're, Cause the art lives forever. Yeah. Yeah. This guy working on a segue. Over yeah. Here. I mean, I, I want, <laughs> I want to talk eternals because I feel very strongly of like a lot of thoughts on eternals. Oh, we should. And, and yeah. Dune. And and uh, the heart of they fall because they are three amazing films in my book. I know you got stuff to do, Chris. So let's get busy talking the movies. Yeah. I know I was loving the conversation, yeah. but we will talk some movies. We did I, ask him to do homework, Steve. So we should, you know. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk more in Fresno. We'll talk more in Fresno. And I, and I absolutely. Oh, and come I, on. And, I, and yes. I'm happy to come back. 
Well, you're welcome back anytime. Yeah, anytime, anytime yeah. bro. All right, Eternals 2021's PG-13, and it clocks in at two hours and 36 minutes. The saga of the Eternals, a race of immortal beings who lived on Earth and shaped its history and civilization. This is directed, by the way, newest, just in case you didn't know, it's the newest MCU movie. And uh, it's directed by Chloe Zhao, written by Chloe Zhao, uh, Patrick Burley, and Ryan Furpo. Stars, listen to this cast right here, okay? We've got a lot of people in this movie. Like, a lot of people. I think there's 10 Eternals. Uh, we got Gemma Chan, Richard Madden, Angelina Jolie, Selma Hyatt, Kit Harrington, Kumal Nanjiani, Lisa McHugh, Brian Tyree Henry, Lauren Ridloff, Barry Kogan, and Madong Sikh. I believe I said his name right. I love that fucking mm-hmm. guy, but I just don't know how to say his name. And Harish Patel. It just, the list goes on and on. There's a lot of people in this movie and a couple of surprises that most people know, but I won't go and say who's who else is in this yeah. movie. But yeah, let's get talking about the Eternals. Um, Chris, what did you think? Man? Um, as I said, uh, I really love the film. I, I definitely recognize like there are weird for me, like weird, like dialogue things and weird pacing things um, that I understand can make people not like it. But I feel like it goes back to that issue that we we're talking about of like trying to watch Hansel's Messiah or, you know, trying to slog through more than a two hour movie in the modern meme age. Like my, my, my thing would, or I guess the only thing that I can say it would also go to Dune. It's just like in the practical world that we exist in, I think it probably would have served it better to, to be a Disney Plus series. That would be my hot take um, because I wanted to be able to spend more time with characters and it was just introducing so much. But I can understand the practical things of like, I don't really know what Feige has plans or what the actual the Marvel machine where that fits in and also to get that many actors and have that kind of budget, you kind of have to do a movie. Um, but I think it would have, I had a great time um, uh, with it. I thought it, as a, a talking about like, you know, just like Marvel is in, I like to think that Marvel is in that place where like we can just experiment and maybe not everybody's going to like it, but fuck them, you know, like we're going to make something experimental and maybe it won't hit but it's it's what it's something cool and new to do. Yeah, they've done the work. Yeah. They they can just, you know, they deserve to do whatever the hell they want yeah. to at this point. Yeah. So that's my hot take on that. Yeah. What do you think, Steve? So um going in, I the good thing is my expectations were just normal. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, we're gonna see what this is. Mind you, I'm a big Camille Nanjiani. Fan. Yeah, he's awesome. Obviously, I was looking forward to seeing he is I've loved him. He was probably my favorite character. Day. He was probably my favorite character. No question. Yeah. That just disappeared for no reason yeah. halfway, through, like a little ways through the yeah. movie. I'm like, where'd he go? Mm-hmm. But, um, and he got stupid jacked for no yeah. reason. I didn't see him with it. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was wondering it? that. It's like, where does that come into play? Yeah. Yes. Well, do you, <laughs> it yeah. looks great. Yeah. He looks fantastic. He looks weird, yeah. but he looks great, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, I think that the story is a normal Marvel arc, which I cannot hate on. Mm-hmm. Uh, they finally brought, I mean, it's pretty Superman, mm-hmm. is who he mm-hmm. is. And there was, it's funny, there was a great point made saying apparently DC characters exist in the Marvel yeah. universe. Yeah. 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 And I was like, oh, I didn't even know. I didn't even think yeah. about that. That's yeah. true. Someone says Superman mm-hmm. in this movie. And, um, and Star Wars. I thought, and it, all these things are, and, and I, I thought that I was like, well, that's very interesting. I didn't catch it until someone mentioned it outside the movie. But I thought that this movie was, um, uh, I think it's setting up for something big for sure. Mm-hmm. I think it was way more cerebral than most Marvel films. Um, I oddly enough, it I'm not a big Selma Hayek fan. I thought she did fine. Mm-hmm. For her to have done fine says a lot in this movie mm-hmm. because I'm not a big fan of Selma Hayek. I, I might have to fight you on um, one, Steve. So, Selma's queen. <laughs> <laughs> I've only liked her in one thing. I've only liked her in one movie, yeah. and that was because I loved that movie. Dust Till Dawn is one of oh. my favorite movies. Yeah, I know why you like that. <laughs> no, not like that. I thought she was a great vampire. But um, so I thought it was a um, it was a very cerebral film about family mm-hmm. and the connections between the two. I thought it was okay. Yeah, it's, and at the end, I'm like, okay. First of all, I don't understand how. People can hate this movie. That's that doesn't make any sense. Like, Why do they hate it? It so makes much? no sense. I'm like, how do you hate this? This movie is. It hits all the like. Here you go. This here's this thing. Here's this thing, and it wraps up. And the then, movie. but yeah. then, love the Snyder cut of Justice League. 
Like, talk about a slog. That, that's very true. Dude. <laughs> that is very true, yeah. bro. How do you hate this movie but love that? I thought it was fine. Right down the middle, it was perfectly fine. I walked away being like, eh. I, the, the second post-credit thing, I had to look up because I didn't know who the guy. <laughs> I was like, who is Blade talking to? Who is this d- yeah. guy? Yeah, and, but Blade's uh, now there. Yeah. He's there now. Blade is there now. That's that, so that's that's that Marvel machine. It's got to churn. Oh, for yeah. sure. And we know we want to see Blade, although I would have rather Wesley's voice, but I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> um, but I, I thought it was good, dude. I thought it was is per- perfectly a fine film. Again, the hatred of it, I Maybe don't sense. understand at all. What did you think, Dan? I'm a, I'm pretty much with you guys. Um, I liked this movie. I'll be honest. I did not love this mm-hmm. movie. I felt that it could have been a little bit shorter. And I'm more in line with what Chris is saying that I think this would have done better as an actual series. Yes. Because there is a lot of exposition built up at the mm-hmm. beginning. And, you know, it would be nice to spend some time with these characters, seeing them do their own original. Like, you know, for instance, let's give each character their own episode yeah. or something yeah. like that. Or, you know, or and then get to know these people and kind of marinate in the existence of the in the world of the Eternals, I should say. Um, I do think that it is one of the prettiest Marvel oh, movies yeah, it's I've gorgeous. seen. I think the cinema, yeah, the cinematography was absolutely gorgeous in this yeah. movie. But at the same time, it was, and, and it, we don't necessarily need this, by the way, but it wasn't one of the funniest Marvel mm-hmm. movies. There were some humorous moments in it. Only Kamel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I think there were some attempts from people that are, uh, that I enjoy their acting and that maybe I don't feel they hit as hard in this movie as they do in mm-hmm. other ones. Um, I did feel that, you know, when you put that much responsibility on the character of Cersei, that maybe she should have been a little bit more charismatic. I felt like she was just a little bit bland in my mm-hmm. opinion. I also felt that way about Richard Madden. I just, they, I was worried about that going into this movie without really knowing much about the Eternals is that, okay, I see a lot of these characters here, but I'm, I'm finding, I'm having trouble finding who the lead is going to. Yeah. Be. Do you know what I mean? Because they're just yeah. so independent on their, their, on their, their own merit, if you will. Yeah. But I can't say that I hated this movie. I did enjoy it. It's just one of those movies that I may not, come back to right away until p- possibly the the sequel comes mm-hmm. so I can kind yeah. of like brush up on it a little bit but I feel like it did exactly what it's supposed mm-hmm. to do it laid the groundwork for the next wave of Marvel mm-hmm. movies that are going to be coming yeah. out I think there's things in this movie that whether or not we know that yet I mean I'm not the guy that read every single Marvel comic and and that's no. the thing too like, like this movie I, I could be wrong about this but I feel like if you we're well versed in the Eternals to begin with that you're, you're going to benefit more from this movie mm-hmm. because you're getting references that we may have missed. You know what I'm saying? So I think that, you know, for people that, that are kind of like pushy, well, source material, source material, source material. Yeah. It's, that's cool, but it, you shouldn't have to depend on Like they should be independent of each other. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? A, a, a good movie does not mean that the source material absolutely this shouldn't depend on the source material is what yeah. I'm saying. I'm sorry. I got a little tongue tied there for just a second, but, um, yeah, I mean, I just think there were some really cool moments in this one. It did slog a little bit for me in the second mm-hmm. act, but it picked up very well in the, in the third act. And it, you know, I had a smile on my face during that whole third act. Uh, it's without doubt that Kumal Nanziani is kind of carrying the weight of this movie, in my opinion. But then again, so is Brian Tyree Henry. Like, I just mm-hmm. love the the introduction of Fast Stars. Yeah. And, you know, there are things, and there are things that we should point out. I mean, that's we got the first gay Marvel character. Mm-hmm. That's something that's that's new. That yeah. it just tells us, like we were talking about earlier, Marvel's taking steps. To keep the machine going. Yeah. And not yes. going to, we're not just going to hang, we can't just fucking hang out with Captain America and Iron Man yeah. all the time. You know what I mean? Like it's got to, it's got to move which, forward. There's a lot more which there. Which is a good thing. And that's what like Last Jedi, as controversial as it was, was trying to do. Let's get away from the Skywalkers. Because yes. for this yeah. to continue. Yeah. And they did a fantastic yeah. job. Yeah. And I think maybe that's a little so, Last Jedi syndrome for this film of like, oh, this is too, I'm used to eating this brand of peanut butter and you just gave me almond butter. Or something like that. <laughs> yeah. True. I mean, it just, I mean, you know, going off of that, it just has a completely different mm-hmm. flavor than a lot of the totally. other movies that are out. But that doesn't make it a bad yeah. thing. And surprisingly enough to me, I am not a huge fan of this person, but I think she kind of kicked ass in this movie was Angelina Jolie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, thought, I loved I her. I love yeah. her character. Yeah. I was surprised. You know, she, she was... For sure. I was not thinking yeah. that I was going to get the enjoyment out of her character that mm-hmm. I ended up getting. So that was a big surprise to me. Um but a lot, of, I, th- I think it's just when you add so many characters to this movie and you're trying to knock this all out in like, you know, a little over two hours, somebody's going to fall short. Yes. So you're not going to get the message across, you know, and, and there's people that I feel sort of got shafted. I don't want to say suffered. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But like, I just, yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. They got shafted. But I mean, I, there's just more that I wanted to see. For instance, I think the, uh, 
who could have been like the big star of this movie just didn't mm-hmm. get their play. And that, of course, is uh, Gilgamesh. Oh, yeah. I thought so Gilgamesh that's... was fucking fantastic, yeah. man. And we just didn't see enough of him. You yeah. know? So I, I can't hate on this movie. I think that it did what it was trying to do. Uh as far as like, I don't know if it's going to be like, I know it's still killing it in the mm-hmm. box office, but then again, it's got the Marvel backing yeah. for it. So of course it's going to do well in, in some sense. Uh, maybe it's going to do better once it starts hitting, you know, digital mm-hmm. and, and Blu-ray and all of that. But um, maybe it'll have the, the I, Phantom I really, Menace uh, syndrome. It's like, oh, I know. There we yeah, go. Right? Yeah. Um, maybe yeah. so. Maybe so. But I think a lot of people are going to come back to this movie and, and maybe not pick it apart mm-hmm. as much as they are yeah. doing. And I'll be honest, when I first saw the movie, I mean, I, I it was a long day. And when I sat there, um, there were a few parts and I'm not saying it had anything to do with the movie. This is completely me. But there were parts where I was kind of like my eyes were getting heavy, Mm -hmm. but I don't think that it had anything to do with the it could have been the tone of the movie a little bit, but I can't say this is a bad movie. It's just it's just it was entertaining. I mean, I'm still talking about it. Yeah, it's not Thor Thor the Dark World. It's not Iron Man 2. Like it's a superior film to those. And like. Every movie doesn't need to be ending yes. when it comes to the Marvel yeah. universe, where it's just so grand yeah. that it's just blowing your mind. I mean, and I think that it's sort of proven that we were at the beginning of phase four for the yeah. most part. And if we look back on like, you know, there were a few, I don't want to call them failures. I didn't particularly care for the movies, but if you go to like, say Thor, mm-hmm. Thor to dark mm-hmm. world, things like that, a uh, second Iron Man, in my opinion, yeah. um, decent, just not anything that I'm going to go back yeah. to. And the Ant-Man movie. films. So this is like, I like Ant-Man as a character and I love Paul Rudd, but just like, I, I like him when he's in the Avengers films more so than yeah. the, than his solo movies. I found the first one entertaining. Mm-hmm. I thought the second one was, was okay, yeah. but um, I agree with yeah. you on that too. Yeah. I just love Paul Rudd. I'll kind of, forget yeah, him for yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. Paul Rudd, you know I mean? he's, 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 oh, he's yeah. America's sweetheart. Um, he's for sure. Like, now, how did you guys like the whole Icarus flying into the too close, quote unquote? It was himself? very That's, on the nose. Yeah, very on the nose. And apparently, <laughs> Marvel's first uh, suicide, death by suicide, in a film that they've done. Is he dead though? I doubt it because no Marvel character is ever dead. Um, he, he's Superman. Yeah. That. Yeah, and you mentioned that, Stephen. I was going to get to that real quick. I mean, the the like, if they needed a Superman in a pinch, yeah. I think Richard Madden would do the job yeah. just fine. I mean, I felt like it was just ba- evil Superman. And I was, so that's all it was. I was bummed that they he he only got one movie. It's like I loved him in Game of Thrones, and it's like oh, I'm happy to be able to spend more time with this actor because I think he's a great actor. But um, see, I, I do too. But I just I don't know, man. I think that a, I got to be honest. I think out of all the characters, I felt like he was the most bland. Yeah, I mean, out of all of them, I don't know if that just has to do with the script or not because I'm he is a fine Selma. actor, and I loved Selma was the most bland. Yeah. Mm. I, I'm going to have to put it up with the leads, man. I think I'm going to have to give that to, to Cersei yeah. and Icarus for me, you, you know, but I mean, yeah, it's all opinions. Well, I think, I think it's just like going to that thing. Cause I'm, I'm definitely going to talk about it with the same thing of Dune. I had to watch Dune twice to like it. And I think, um, and now I love it. Now I love it. Um, because I was just like, uh, and also I was like dealing with some other stuff with my cats going crazy. Oh. Hey, wired during when we were watching on HBO max. Um, uh, but, uh, that's a long story. Yeah, it's uh, not a movie. It's not a movie that that but, asks for But I got you yes, need you to need to. And like, I'll I'll admit I had cheated and I read the Wikipedia before watching it. So I think that also like almost counted as a first viewing for Eternals of why maybe I liked it so much because I was just I knew everything was going to happen, so I could just I, I don't know how to explain myself like focus on the actual film itself and not getting lost in anything. Um, and right. like that was kind of and. That was the same thing for Dune. And going back to that idea of like, I think it would have been served better to be a series because then like, I never like, wait, F- Fastest has a problem with Icarus. I never knew this. Where is this from? Like that could have been explored in an earlier episode if it was a series and given more weight of like, I'm really enjoying kicking your ass, uh, Icarus. Like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Or Sprite being in love with Icarus. Like that just kind of, yeah. that wasn't, it was, it was told, not shown with uh with right. Kingo saying it but it like, wasn't really shown or the whole thing with the love of humanity like that could have been more explored ajax and uh and uh cersei's love of humanity um for sure there's a lot to unpack with the attorneys yeah. that's the thing i mean they have what was it seven thousand years of history trying to be yeah. condensed into like two plus hours <laughs> obviously you're gonna have some failures as far as telling the storytelling yeah part of it so does, it's just know? like i almost wish that marvel had just like, cause like imagine Loki being a movie like that would have been really, really weird. And like a it lot of it lost. Was. 
and in oh, WandaVision. Sure. That would have been weird. Um, uh, I think I think uh, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier actually might have fared better as a movie for me because it was very it was very Marvel formula, and I wouldn't have minded it. But I think I think it's just like it's like business decisions and art decisions going together. Yes. Like my guess would be like. Falcon and Winter Soldier aren't established enough characters to give them a film. Um, but that doesn't make any sense because Eternals aren't established characters. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. I think I don't know what the plans are, but I just kind of wish like I wish they had just gone with a TV show. But I don't know if they could have gotten Chloe Zhao for a TV show um, or a God. That makes actors. a good point. Yeah, that's true. I don't know yeah, if they could have gotten know, some. They're high. all busy. Yeah. Heck no! Yeah, they wouldn't have gotten they Angelina would have to kill her Jolie. off on the first episode. Yeah, they would. oh, they could have got Angelina, but Selma would have to be killed off in the first episode. Yeah, and then I don't know if uh, everybody else could probably. I don't know though. Kamel is in. He's all of a sudden becoming like the dude. Yeah, he's another America sweetheart. Yeah, yeah he is. He you is. know, he to, the fact if someone would have told me ten years ago that Kamel Nanjiani would be one of the sexiest people alive in People magazine. I'd have been like, oh, I'm good. This this is a big story I'm going to be missing for yeah. the next. This is going to be huge. Yeah. I would not have believed it, and yet here we are. Yeah. And but it also shows what the expectation is mm-hmm. of the male figure <laughs> in yeah. order to be, you know. But that's a whole different yeah. situation. I just think that you know this this movie is unhateable in my opinion. Yeah. Unhateable. I, I mean, I, it was, I loved it, even though I keep on seeing, in my brain, Brian Tyree Henry is still Paperboy. Mm-hmm. In my brain. <laughs> and I still was like, hey, Paperboy doing this awesome stuff with these yeah. magic. I thought it was fine, dude. I thought it was, I'm with Dan. It was fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, there was one article that talked about it could be, you know, like, going back to like, this isn't Thor the Dark World. This isn't Iron Man 2. Is there some like sexism against Chloe Shao that there was just so much mm. hate being brought, brought on it? Um, or something like that. It just doesn't, in my mind, it doesn't make sense. Make sense. It doesn't it's make sense. not like I understand. Like just as Dune would suffer with that um, of of the format of the film and the constraints. Like uh, I can't pronounce Vill- Vill- Villanevo. The the, the director. Way. I don't know like, how to say his like, name. Yeah. Um, he wanted to make both at the same time, and I was like, man, Dune probably would have been. I would have been in, into something like film three and just release them like one month at a time or there something we like go. that. Yes. That would have been yes. awesome because there were times where I, I want to spend more time with like Leto. I want to spend more time with these characters to let it yes. marinate more. But obviously that doesn't work in that uh, that two hour kind of room that you have in a cinema. Yes. You yes. know. Agreed. One more question on that. I think people have already talked about it enough, but did you did the sex scene rattle you guys as much as it's rattling everybody no. else? No. <laughs> that was, no. That was so I didn't sad. think so either. People are making such yeah. a big fucking deal about it, but it's like it's, people have sex. Yes, it's a Marvel movie. The one thing I will say, and I'm being serious when I say this, I'm not trying to be stupid. <laughs> I believe I detected insertion on that scene. What? I'm, and, when, and when I say that, don't hear me out. I'm not trying to be dumb. Like, because I'm watching it and I'm like, oh, there's the, well, there's a sex scene I haven't seen in a Marvel movie yet. And, and what I'm saying is it's sort of that that move that we see in movies that simulates insertion with the rocking back. And forth. Like, I felt like they did. No, no, I'm being serious. I was kind of like, whoa. OK. It, it was a little that, Game of Thrones. It was that, a little Game of Thronesy, a little bit, but. A little something like that. that. Yeah. Like I really wasn't trying. I really wasn't trying to make a stupid yes. like dick mm-hmm. joke comment on that. But it's just like that. There was the rocking motion. I went, oh, they, they went mm-hmm. there. OK, cool. But I didn't. It didn't take me out of the movie or anything like that. People fuck. That's just the way things are. Heroes do it too. You yeah. know what I mean? But I was just curious if, because I've, I've read, listened, and, and just heard people talking about that scene. Like, it's just so fucking rattling yeah. to people. And I was like, okay, it was a scene. I, I, I think, you know I think I mean? Tristan on PCL had the best point of just like, this is something you probably want to go see a couple of times. I had to watch Last Dead Eye twice to like it. Um, I had to watch Dune twice to like it. And I feel like. As I said, I cheated and I just knew what's going to happen because I read the Wikipedia thing. I think it's just if you can focus on the or if you can ignore the medium which it's being presented and you just and you can appreciate all the other things, I think it works. Yeah. No, I agree. I love Tristan, by the way. Tristan's oh, yeah. great. I would love to get that guy yeah. on the show one of these days. Tristan's mm-hmm. awesome. Hey, Tristan, mm-hmm. if you're listening. But uh, yeah, so we should, we might as well rate this. Now, Chris, I don't know if you know how we rate. It's kind of <laughs> lame, but we're going to do yeah. it anyway. Um you want to go first, Steve? Sure. I will Eternals? give out of I will give um the Eternals 2.5 out of 
five. No, two point five out of five. Uh, oh shoot! I don't even know what they're called. What are those giants for called? some reason. What are those giants called? Deviants? No, the no. Big. Is it deviants? No, the monster titan. Oh, the celestial. I mean, the, the celestial. Oh, there we go. Celestials. celestials. I will give it two point five out of five. Frozen celestials. <laughs> All right, I'll give Chris a second to to figure out this one okay. here, but I'll go ahead and go with mine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give Eternals 2.5 out of 5 Bollywood performances. Ah, that was okay. so ridiculous. Okay, all right, I got to think now. Oh, no. Um, well, I'll be fair. I'll be okay. This is the first time on, so if you want to just give a number. Oh, okay, or right, let's see if this works with this game. I'll give it a 4.5 out of 5 awkward sex scenes. Um, ah, okay. perfect. <laughs> You're in. Perfect. <laughs> You're in, man. That's it. He did it perfectly. He's a pro already. Yeah, right. Four point five. That's good. So you really, really. I, love I, I did. I think I just because I think maybe it's I don't know if it's just like want to be artist of me of like I I appreciate experimentation. Um, For and, sure. And uh, or that's just the teacher or former teacher yes. of me of just like like I think it's cool that they went for it. Um, whereas like so many other franchises going back again to star Wars, just getting scared and just, let's yeah. go back to the Skywalker. Yeah, yeah. 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 They and, like, think they think, tried some new they, ground. They took experience. They took chances, yeah. but think, but think, you know, like thank God for Mandalorian because that basically saved the star Wars franchise almost. Um, for sure. Uh, so I, I, I think there's probably that factor in it for me. Um, and also, as I said, I cheated and I just knew what was going to happen. So I, I feel like I was able to just sit in, in the theater and enjoy it. But my girlfriend, actually, uh, Colleen, she loved it on the first viewing. And I think there's so much also we didn't talk about. It, it was just so cool that like it was like a, almost a history last, a lesson, almost like going through history and mythology and things like that. And it was just a lot of cool world building for me. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we are condensing the reviews, but I, mm-hmm. I really loved the rock talk at the beginning yeah. of this. So I will trade that yeah. any day of the week. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, all right, cool. So that's the Eternals, ladies and gentlemen. We all liked it. Chris loved the shit out of this movie <laughs> and good for him, man. Seriously, yeah. that's great. So moving along, let's talk about Dune. We already started kind of mentioning oh, that for one. Sure. We might just not be able to do Heart of They Fall. I think we can do Heart of They Fall. Or for me, I can do it very quickly because I don't know how much I have to say about it. I think this is just a... I would just give it a five out of five fucking Idris Alba is a badass motherfuckers. Um, uh, like, <laughs> dude, like dude. this is just like dude. a perfect Western film in my mind. It's almost flawless, except for the fact that I thought it was too short and rushed. Um, yeah. All right, then I'm flipping it right yeah. now. We're just going to talk about the heart sorry, of the sorry, right, because we've already got on, no, 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 no. Chris and totally I are fine. on the same <laughs> page right now. I just don't I, like. It's just a good fun. Awesome. I was like, I wish this was a movie theaters and like I could experience like people got to experience like good, the bad and the ugly. Like this is just a great Western film. It's perfect. Yeah. Let me just but, do a, a little talk yeah. real quick on this one. So for people that haven't seen this movie, yeah. The Harder They Fall, you can watch this now on Netflix. Uh, it's a 2021 American revolutionist, we- <clears throat> excuse me, Western film directed by James. It is James, correct? Yes. The way he spells it, I was curious. Seal's brother. What? Oh, is that right? Cool. <laughs> well, that makes sense because mm. that makes sense because Seals on the soundtrack. Oh, so that makes a lot of sense. Oh. That sound that soundtrack yeah, yeah, yeah. was awesome. It really was. Uh, James Samuel, who co-wrote the screenplay with uh, Boaz Yakin, I believe is okay. how you say it. The film stars Jonathan Major. That's Cowboy Kang mm-hmm. right there. Idris Elba. Zazie Beat, listen to this cast. Zazie Beats, Regina King, Delroy freaking Lindo, Lakeith Stanfield, RJ, is it Siler? Yeah. Siler? Kyler? Which is uh, a Dan- star. But anyway, go ahead. Daniel Deadweiler, um, and so on. At Al, let's just and say. And Delroy this- Lindo, and Delroy Lindo, and Delroy Dude, Lindo. And Delroy Lindo. That's the th- I mean, <laughs> come on, man. You know what I mean? Anything with yes. Delroy Lindo. This is an amazing God. take on a Western revenge movie oh. uh, with just so much added flavor and and just done in a way that I personally haven't seen yeah. before. I feel like this movie could have this movie could have taken some liberties and made it very cliche. Yes, it could have it could have gone too modern. Mm-hmm. It could have done you know uh, started throwing in pop culture references yes. and things like yeah. that that don't that exist in every cliche movie you see now. Yes. But they kept it Western, yeah. and that's what's fucking fantastic about this movie. Uh, Violence off the charts. I was really surprised about the the amount of violence and blood that they show in this movie. And not only the way they show the blood, but it's, well, yes, exactly. The way that they show the blood. It was a little bit different than I'm used to seeing. Mm. And there were hints of like uh, 
Tarantino-esque violence in this movie at certain parts for me. Um, But the cast speaks for itself. I mean, it's just such a, such a great movie with all these, I don't even want to call him up and coming actors anymore. Like like Keith Stanfield stands on his Mm -hmm. own at this point. Jonathan Majors. I mean, we're just starting to see what he can personally seeing what he can do. We saw him in uh, Loki. And we're going to be seeing a lot more What's of him in the MCU. I, oh, I didn't finish Loki. I didn't know he was in Loki. You did? Oh, oh then I can't. Oh, dear. oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> now I'm I, excited. I, 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 just threw a, I just threw a reference out that I hope you missed. But uh, yeah, you're going to awesome. be seeing a lot more. A lot more. So I think you need to go back and finish Loki. Okay. It's also okay, it's also just, in the news if you like if you know the cast of 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 Ant Man Quantum Mania you know who he plays. This yeah. is true. This so is true. It's not. It's not. not, it's not uh, it's yeah. really not, Steve. He's. I was just going to tell you. He's wait. going to be Kang. I can't wait, dude. He's Kang the yes. Conqueror. G. We was Kangs. Yeah. I like it. That's why I called him Cowboy <laughs> Kang. Yeah. I yeah. love it. I just love the plot of this movie. Oh, I thought, dude. and and then when you throw in Idris Elba into anything, Game you know you're going to get a fantastic over. performance. Yep. I love Idris Elba in this movie. I was thinking the other day of how much I love The Wire, and I love those seasons where he's in it. Um, oh, he's and, so good. Yeah. He's so in the. I'm talking about from the first moment we don't even see his face. Yep. They didn't have to tell me that was Idris Elba. I knew it was him. Yep. He's got that like, walk. Oh, He's Idris. got that walk. That walk. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, this is what we're here for, man. Yeah. I mean, and the funny thing is, when I first saw that first scene, I was like, dude, this guy is brutal. But the twist they throw in at the end, you're like, oh, I get it. I yeah. totally get it. Would I have gone that far? Yeah. <laughs> no. But I get it now. I said I did not see that yeah. coming. Look at this. And like, Just, yeah. So like my review, review, I feel like I can be, be summed up like this in a huge nerdy way. Like there's like that scene from Animal House where Keith for Sutherland uh, or no, Donald Sutherland is talking about like why is like Paradise Lost is a great book or whatever because of its interesting villain in Satan. Like we all love Satan, even though we hate him. And Mm -hmm. like the definition for me of like a great art or a piece of art of like, if it's, if it's the classic protagonist versus antagonist, the film is based upon a great antagonist. Like all the Marvel films, the best Marvel films are the, with the ones with the best villains, Loki, Thanos. And the, and like, and it's like when you, or it's Megatron in 1986 Transformers, you know, or Galatron or whatever. Uh, And like, it's like, when I am in a film and I hate the villain, but I am sad when they die, that is a great Perfect. film. Like I am yeah. sad when Idris Elba. Or spoiler, sorry, uh, but like uh, I can't remember the, the 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 quick draw one guy who who would. Oh, he, I hated when he I, died. I hated it, but I hated Was it Jim. I, Was his name? Jim? I hated him, but I hated when he died. Oh, uh, and I hated when the other quick draw guy. Yeah. When yes. he, I was like, like, I don't want any of these people. Yes. On either side, no, they're to so die. Well, they're so well fleshed out. You oh. care, they're so well rounded characters. Like there's huge stakes. Like and that's where it has an advantage over like a Marvel film because there are never any stakes on Marvel film. Um, at the end of the day, um, but like in this, like oh god, are they actually going to win this thing? Or am I gonna have to watch Jonathan Majors die? Like, yes, like, exactly. I and the, and, the, and, and the twist at oh, the end, it's like I didn't see it coming, even though it was so obvious. I did not see I that at when I had my was one mouth of those, go ahead. dropped. Like, yeah. oh my God. I thought I had things kind of figured out, but no, I was really surprised how much that threw yeah. me. Dude. Because, dude. I don't know. They, they, you know what? They, they fucking I, stuck I'm, I'm stuck so mad moment. that they didn't put this in theaters because this would be a great movie. Oh, I know, man. Oh, what a bu- I like even when they come into formation on the horses yeah. coming into the city, when they're just like leaning over and forward on them. I'm like, look how comfortable they are on these things. And yeah. then the train was called the Bozeman. Yeah. Just yes. beautiful. I dude. miss that. Oh shit, yes. Oh, oh how gosh. beautiful I miss that, too. that dude. And then, and then Well No, go ahead. Well, what's cool is like these like, okay, it's not historical fiction or it's not historical or anything, but like all the characters are based upon historical people. Which is awesome. Which is so which cool. Is- Freaking to make that uh, whole cool thing. point of like there were African American cowboys and this is another yes. part of history that is ignored. Yes, you were t- and 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 for me until you just said it right now, I was like, you know what? You're right. Lakeith Sanfield was a villain. Yeah, I didn't even think of him as a villain in my right? brain. He was a gentleman. He was villain, yes. man. like he didn't want to kill that kid. He's like, yeah. why are we doing this? Yeah. Like I don't want to do this. Yeah, but if it's you or me, it's definitely not going to be. I said, oh, he is. You're right. Yeah. But I just didn't think of him that way. Yeah. 
Which, he stands out in everything he does these days, man. Lakeith is yes. so oh, good. He's so that good. scene on the train when he's talking to the yep. soldiers and just how gentlemanly he, he was. Really you know, he had was. to handle his business, but he was being like totally when he looked at the kid, he's like, "Oh, you're the hero, aren't yeah. you? Like you're that yeah. guy." Okay, and he smelled it on him yeah. like you don't have it in you to do what you need yeah. to do. And like, and I, it was yeah. just a beautiful movie. And if I'm thinking about it, like. When I said it's like, oh, it's historical fiction. Like, if you watch like Tombstone, that's historical fiction because hardly any of that actually happened. Like, that's not how exactly. Doc Holliday died, um, or exactly. he didn't do any of that stuff. So it's very embellished. And so, like, this is it's just for me. Like, it's like it's a perfect film. I love Dune and I love the Eternals, but like, man, this just one. Like, this is oh, a dude. this is a story made for a film. Like, no question. Yeah. No, this is a ser- this is like at the end. I'm like, oh, they better fund this sequel yesterday. Oh yeah, because I want to see now. That I, I love know that ending scene. Be, I love that oh, ending scene. It's like, oh, ah, it was perfect. <laughs> and then I love how there's a part that's no, like Dan said could be cliche, where Homegirl walked in trying to pull one over on Idris mm-hmm. in her cl- mm-hmm. his club, and he looked at her. and He's like, who do you think I am? Yeah. Like, do you think this little charade you're putting on is going to work with? I said, oh, well, yeah. I love how they're just like, yeah, he didn't fall for it. He's mm. like, come on. Yeah. What, what are we? What are Smart we? decisions were made when filming <laughs> this movie, yeah. man. They could have gone. They could. This could have been a completely different yeah. movie. They could have really gone with like Flash and throw in more like, um, I don't know, not necessarily like hip hop culture, but like just more mm-hmm. pop culture. Yes. Modern yes. references is what I'm getting at. Yes. And that would have just watered down the movie and they kept it Western. Yeah. They Perfect. kept it a revenge and it's Western Perfect. classic style. It's so cool because these are just such insanely strong characters. Um, and it's it's just like. I don't know how to say this. Uh, say it. I don't know. It's just because. It's just. It's just insanely cool to just see strong African American characters, and it's just, they're just being badasses. And there's no like, I don't know. I just like no. That's like, exactly what I'm yeah. getting at. It's like there there could have been. And I didn't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. on that note, that's what I'm getting at. Is that they could have, depending on who made this movie, it could have gone very differently. They could have focused more on, like I said, the pop culture stuff like that, and to make it more of like a. Um, uh, now I sound like an old man, but more like hip. You know what I'm saying? Like a more hip movie. And it's just they 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 didn't do that. They took the chances that were necessary to make this movie as great oh, as no it was. It's, no question. It's, it's a fantastic, fun all the way through. It's action-packed. Like I said, there's lots of violence and, and so, you know, there's lots of blood. I don't want to say gore, but there is a few gore scenes too. That, I mean, it, or there are a few if, gore if, scenes. If you can get actually, to a Quentin you know, Tarantino film, you're going to be fine. Oh, you'll be fine. You're going to be yeah. fine. And also, yeah, but they I mean, let Regina do a monologue that I'm like, there we are. Oh, yeah. Let's not forget that Regina can act while she's peeling an apple. And I love her. Can just yeah. do it. And the dialect she was doing was super cool oh, too. Cool. Yeah, what was the affect? I don't know, but it worked. It was super cool. Oh, I can't wait. She need uh, they. Oh, this sequel better happen. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I mean, if we're getting we if the sequels they funded, this better happen. Yeah. Well, you know, in the sense of like not coming out in a movie theater versus being on Netflix where it's readily available and someone can just go to it at any point in time versus having to go out to the movies to see this. It's probably it might be better that it's actually in on true, Netflix right true, now because a lot of people don't well, know about it and it's going to get way more and exposure. Like because like, the other film that we were going to try to watch, Last Duel, which is supposed to be really good bombed because it's just it's not that popcorn or, or like that modern yeah. pop it didn't get a lot of yeah. box office love. it's already out at theaters here in nashville i couldn't see it and i was uh, and i Lord. yeah and i really wanted to see it and like that's a great point of like a western film uh oh, put that at the movie theaters this isn't the next saw film or fast and furious i don't know if i want to go no. yeah yeah I mean, you gear that towards a certain crowd. That's who's going to show up. And here it's just one of those, oh, let me take a chance. It's a Sunday afternoon. Let me hit play mm-hmm, and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And I think there's going to be more of that than people actually going out to the theater. Yeah. Now, so, Stan, are you ready to rate this thing? I'm so fucking ready to Alan. rate this movie, Steve. I'm going to go. You know, you know me, Steve. I know. You, you know, know how I get. You shoot for the stars. <laughs> you know how I get. I think Chris got me beat, but you, you know <laughs> how I get. Um I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna give this movie a 4.25 out of five. Uh, what am I gonna give it, Steve? Uh, let me give it bullets through the cheek. Mm, that was rough. Oh, what a that was. That's a rough way to go. That was brutal. Yeah. Um. Oh, and it man? hurts. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Go ahead. No, it hurts so bad. When uh, what's her name? After she kills, like he was faster. He was faster than you. Oh, that was a heartbreak. Yeah. Oh, what a heartbreak! Because you cheated him. Yeah. He was fat. Oh, it was so good. But um. 
I'm going to Dan. Are you braced? I am, sir. Are I you, have a feeling I know what you're going to do. Or do you think? Do you think you know what I'm going to do, Dan? I, I think I do. I'm going to give this the harder they fall, a five out of five. Uh, uh, apple peeling monologues by Regina King. Mm. Totally fair. Mm. Totally fair. A perfect movie for me. And quite, you know, I'll be honest with you. I probably didn't rate it five because of the complex you've given me <laughs> over the years of going so hard. But like, when I say four point two five, I'll stay there. Yeah. But it feels more like a point seven five. But but this movie's just fantastic for anyone that doesn't have not Maybe you haven't heard of this movie, or you're just looking for something to watch this week. Check this one out. I guarantee it's a, it's a fast paced film. Like as I said, it's like wait, it's already over. Like crap. Oh, like, it's that's... so over. It yeah. was that quick, dude. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. All right, and Chris, you were a five out of five, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's like it's it's if I'm gonna say what a fir- perfect film is, a perfect western, that's a perfect western for me. Done deal. Let's quickly talk about Dune, and then we'll go ahead and get out of here. I know you got things to do, Chris. And again, thank yeah, you so much for yeah, joining us today, bro. We, we, I, my girlfriend doesn't seem to be. I don't really know where she is. I yeah. don't want her stomach starting to grumble <laughs> yeah, or anything man. like that. You know, people got to eat, so we don't want to keep you from it. I say, I say, we could do a quick five minute, right, Dan? I think we could do. We could. We can knock it out. Ah, uh, I don't want to. Uh, let's, let's give Dune at least ten. Let's give Dune. I hate to. Be, okay. I'm the guest on the right. show. I'm down. I do love this film. Right. I'm and down. I love this book. This is a guest request. Dune, 2021 release. This is a two hour and 35 minute movie. The feature adaptation of Frank Herbert's science fiction novel about the son of a noble family entrusted with the protection of the most valuable asset and most vital element in the galaxy, and that's the spice, mm. the spice melange. All Worm right. Poop. So. Let's talk about this one. I mean, it's got another pretty much all-star cast, mm-hmm. actually. Timothy Chalamet, uh, Rebecca Ferguson, Zendaya, Oscar Isaac, Jason Momoa. I'll talk about him in just a second. Uh, Stellan Skarsgård, uh, Josh Brolin, Javier fucking Bardem. How do you say his name? Is it Bardem? Yeah, Bardem. I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel like I always mess that one up. Uh, Bautista. Dave Bautista's in it. There's a lot of people in this movie. Um, I'm going to stop rambling because I want to talk about it quickly. But let's go ahead and get into Dune. And again, Please, Chris, as our guest, let us know what you think. Um, this is a, I would say, again, just, I don't know how to do this. Uh, I'll say without. So I play a TikTok sound for you to make it probably, go. Probably. Sorry. A little bit more pressure no, uh, on you. <laughs> no, 4. no worries, 4. man. 5 out of, damn it, the, the meme culture that we live in that doesn't allow people to just stay in a movie theater for like six hours. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> because that, I mean, as I said, it was just. I had to watch it twice yeah. to, to appreciate it for what it was doing um, and like realize certain things that I wasn't catching and I hadn't read the book in five years and I'd forgotten about. I was like, oh crap. Cause it's such a, it's such a deep, deep world. And like, it's not something like Lord of the Rings where it's like, okay, that makes sense to cut out the stuff with the Shire. That doesn't really yeah. make any sense. Let's cut that stuff. But like, if you do certain things, you lose a lot. If, of cutting things you lose a lot of explanation of like of like the whole in the book there's a whole part of like thinking that jessica is the uh uh the uh the traitor uh that that takes up a huge part and uh that's just that doesn't even happen in in this film verse and it's like oh man i felt like i like lost a lot from there so I, I I don't know I, I I don't I don't I can't be eloquent about this one I wasn't eloquent earlier but I I, I liked it a lot um, four point five for me out of five nice okay go ahead Steve um I thought this movie was okay oh, I know that tone. <laughs> I know that tone. it was um that's the only, I don't really have much to say about it because I was just like. It didn't, there was not a moment where I was just invested in this film Mm -hmm. ever. Yeah. And I think it was just like, you know, Timothy Chalamet is just a big pile of like, just bored. You're going to piss so many people off right now. He really is, dude. He's just like, he's so bored, which is genius (laughs) because you can just throw anything on him that you want. Look how this he is. Sure. Because he's nothing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he could be that. Why not? <laughs> you, Harsh words you know what in the Hudson camp. So he's like a blank canvas that you could just throw anything onto. And I he's just kind of like a human tofu. Yeah, pretty much. He's like that he is that. He is the tofu. He is the acting version of tofu. 
<laughs> Anything you put him around, that's who he is. And I just thought it was like, fine, whatever. The voice was cool. This is the first movie I've seen. Mom- well, one of the first that I've seen Momo in. I was like, I like Momo. He's good in this movie. But everything else, I was like, it's fine. It's <laughs> fine. I would probably give it. Man. Uh, I mean, Skarsgård's always. Is it Skarsgård or Skarsgård? I think it's Skarsgård. And is he the dad is of like Skarsgard? Bill Skarsgård? Are they all like, related? Is. That yes. whole family. Wow. Yeah. They're all related. I did not, know that. Guy. I did not yeah. know that. That's a working family wow. right that there. Is one man. Working Stellan, it's, yeah, it's Skarsgård. All great it's character Skarsgard. actors. Skarsgård. Yeah. Um, so I would say I would have to give this because people are like, it's beautiful. I'm like, it's fine. It's a finely shot movie. In it's fine. I would give it a two out of five humongous worms. <laughs> Dan, what do you think? I'm not going to be hard on this movie like you are, Steve, because I am a gentleman and I just think you're being downright okay, rude right fair. now. That's so fair. no, I'm just kidding. No. So here's my background with Dune. I, I haven't read the book. I haven't seen the eight was 84 movie mm-hmm. with Sting and, and, you know, and co. Um, so my, my, ex, my uh, experience with Dune is extremely minimal. Now going into this movie and seeing, you know, the anticipation of this movie when it was held up and, and how much people wanted this, I was excited for this just because I'm excited when people, you know, it's like, like when you get your, your, your big novel, like let's take Lord of the Rings there. I'm not even a Lord of the Rings fan, but I was excited when people were like, yes, these movies mm-hmm. are coming out because that it's just important. I just, I think people should have a good time and, and, and see these things that they've read about as kids, perhaps, you know, come onto the big screen and hopefully it's going to be, yeah. you know, yeah fruitful for them. So I was very excited for people for this movie. Now I went into this, I did see it the first night I saw it in IMAX and I will have to say that I think that may have been the difference in opinions of yours mm-hmm. and mine, Steve, because this movie is fucking beautiful. You, <laughs> if you see it, you in gotta IMAX see it on a big sound. Screen. Yeah, dude. It's yeah. I mean, I really, you know, and you know me, Steve, I will just got that's yeah. all bullshit. If I really think yeah. it is no being in the theater, particularly in the IMAX theater is what really kind of did it for okay. me as far as getting what they were going for, because it is in fact a beautiful movie. I mean, and this, and the way the soundtrack is and the way that the, just the, the ambient sounds, they all just suck you in and you just feel like you're part of it. Now, if I was sitting there watching this on a Saturday afternoon with my dog on my lap with phones ringing, whatever, and you know, I'm looking at my phone and all that kind of stuff. I think that it would be very easy for me to be distracted from this movie and not really appreciate mm-hmm. what it's trying to do. Oh. That said, I was not prepared to go into this movie. Uh, I did not realize it was going to be a sequel. Mm-hmm. So oh, I'm yeah. thinking it's just going to be Dune. Oh, man. I'm thinking, oh, man. I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, but, but then again, but that's the thing is that I didn't have that prior knowledge. Do you mm-hmm, know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like, I just think, I was thinking I was going to get this, this, uh, Maybe it was going to have sequels that are like the next, like a continuation of the story. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yes. saying, right? In other words, like, you know, New Hope versus Empire yeah. or something to that effect. Um but this was just like we got this movie. It's it's kind of slogging along just a little bit for my taste because I didn't know any of these characters and I didn't know the pri- I still don't know the prize at the end of this, which apparently is something to be. It's a spectacle okay. from what I understand. Yeah. You know okay. what I mean? Um, but uh, so when we finally did get to the end, I was like, oh, it just I mean, that movie hits a brick wall if you don't know oh, yeah. what you're yeah. expecting. Yep. Yeah, because then it's just like, oh, yeah, and there's plenty more. See you next year. Yeah. And then that's it. The movie just fucking ends. That would have you know? sucked so, if it tanked. And, <laughs> yes, absolutely. It would have absolutely sucked. You know, and I mean, I, I know that they got their part, too. I really think they were always going to get the part, yeah. too. I don't think they would have invested this much time and money into a into a franchise and then be like, maybe we will, maybe yeah. we won't. I think that was always the plan. Yeah. Uh, it's good for, you know, it's good for the Internet. Mm-hmm. But that's just my opinion. Um, I don't I don't agree with you on Timothy Chalamet, Steve. I think he's fine. I mean, he's I. If I'm going to put him in the role that, oh God, I just blanked on the movie. It's the one with him and Steve Carell. Um, this, not this boy's life. Uh, God damn it. Why am I blanking? He's like a, that? he's like a heroin act- addict or something like that. He's a yeah. meth addict. Yeah. And it's a, a beautiful boy. I think it was beautiful boy perhaps. But anyway, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Yeah, it was beautiful boy. That's exactly. It was 2018. That's a great movie. And I know he's got the acting chops, mm-hmm. man. Um, with this one, I just felt like he was sort of uh, incubating. You know what I mean? And we're going to see when we do, we, we see flashes of what's to come okay. and you know, with the Fremen. So I think that maybe his moment wasn't to shine like his, this was not his time to shine. This was a lot of setup for this yes. movie. Okay. And I think for people that have, that have read the books and, have, and know the story, 
I think they're right on point. And that's the way it seems. Like, man, I've been listening to Joe Stark talk about this movie since yeah. PCL. And with good reason. He loves it. He's been he's read the book multiple mm-hmm. times. So I get that. I made a reference uh, earlier before we started recording about like the Harry Potter thing. You know, I mean, I read all those books. So I get going into a movie knowing what's to come mm-hmm. and being like, oh, shit, I can't wait. So I totally appreciate that. Okay. I think this movie was made for the book readers. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, yes, uh, you know, yes. prior fans. And and if that's you, then I'm very happy for you because most of you seem to be very, very into this and, and can't wait for the next one. I'm going to be there. And I will say that this movie did, in fact, interest me to where I think I do need to read this. I want to be part of the yeah. conversation. I want to know what everyone loves about this because it's not like I was watching this going, I just don't get it. Okay. I don't know what. Like, to me, it just seems like, oh, I just wish I knew more about this. I wish I knew more about, like, the Shailud and just, like, okay. the history. I don't know if, if th- there's more history with that or if it's just a ex- big-ass worm that exists in the, in the universe, but I want to know more about this one. It left me really anticipating the next one, but I just wish that I could have gotten a little more yeah. out of it because I, I didn't know what I was getting the, into. There's literally sense. like 20,000 years of history of, of, of backstory of, of to, 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 to like fit in. It's just like further than like game of Thrones stuff where there was a series. And I think that would just be going back to the Eternals. It's like, I think even more so to Eternals, this should have been a series. And I wonder if it's yeah. money things like to get that budget to make it look the way it does or to, to get the actors to do it. Yeah. Um, where I feel like, cause there is so much, I like, I was just sitting as you guys were talking. It was just like, there is so many things to explain of like, I don't, wouldn't even know where to start. It's like s- space travel is dependent upon the spice, which is the, is how they, it's, it's, it's a drug and it basically gives you yeah, force spices, everything. Apparently it gives you, if you take enough of it, it gives you foresight or prescience that you can see into the future so much that you are able to bend space time. And that's how space travel works. You are bending space with your mind. And that's what the, the guild is, is people have taken so much spice and they've turned into non-humans. And the reason why they had to do that is because like, and they'll, you'll notice they're only using uh, knives and stuff and they have the shields and like there's no robots it's because 10,000 years before that there was ai took over and there was this big jihad thing there and like they oh, disallowed nothing can be like a robot and you can't have those like star wars type ships um and star trek type ships um hmm. and that's why the for howet like you see his eyes roll back when he's asked to do a calculation because yeah. there are no computers because he's been trained as a mentat to be a human computer which it completely also skips over that Paul has been trained his whole life to not only be a Bene Gesserit, but a Mentat as well. So he is cold and calculating and just a boring computer because that's how he's been trained. So you miss that. So like, like yeah. I'm just like, this is why he's so cold and like this and acting like this because he's been trained like this his whole life. And there's just so many things that like you're just missing where if it was a series that could talk and you could have flashbacks uh to these things and make it make sense um and like it almost doesn't even work in the like the sci-fi's miniseries where it's like a three-parter and like there you don't have the budget you don't have the actors and almost not even enough time like there's just yeah. so much and it's uh, it, it's cool that you said you're going to read the book cuz there's such a huge awesome world behind this behind all of it yeah and and you and you explaining what you just explained basically reinforces what yes. I'm saying. You got so much more yes. out of this movie because you knew what they were talking yeah. about. You knew yeah. what the spice does. You knew all of that shit. And I just, it's not like I feel like the movie failed on mm-hmm. telling me that. I feel like I failed by not boning up on it before yeah, I went. Okay. Like, I feel like yeah. this movie was made for, you know what I mean? It was made for the fans. Yes. I, I, and, I, yes. yeah. and if it takes on new new fans, fantastic. Yep. But I feel like it's, this was like a love letter it's, to the It's Endgame. Because if you go into Endgame having never seen a previous Marvel film, you are lost as fuck. Like, yes. yeah, you're missing yeah. so many references yes. and, but you know, it, so, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a two, I see this movie two ways. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I, I feel like, I don't feel like it failed mm-hmm. me. I sort of feel like I failed it, <laughs> but I really, you know what I mean? I really do. It's just like, there's certain movies where I'm like, you know what? This is bullshit. And like, you know, getting back to like people going, well, the source material, the source material. I mean, I personally normally think that a movie doesn't need to be dependent on its source material to be mm-hmm. good. Do you yes, know what I'm totally. saying? And in this case. In this case, I, I don't feel that's the, like I don't feel like it's just like, oh, yeah, but the source material, that's why you should mm-hmm. like it. No, there's a lot going on and there's much to be appreciated yeah. that, that I just don't personally yeah. see. Yeah. You know what that's I mean? That's a great point. That's that's I, it's, it's not that I don't see it. 
now I just don't see mm-hmm. it yet because I haven't educated myself yeah. yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And as so. I said, I feel like that was a mistake of this. Like I, I originally thought that it was going to be a series. And then they said, it's like, it's going to be a movie. Like, Oh, don't try that again. Don't do that again. Just make it a series. Cause it would work so much better or just be more palatable of like, or you're just not shoving all of this stuff at once. Cause there was the stuff that I had For forgotten. Sure. Like, the whole stuff with Jamis and like it's like confusing because Paul's having visions of being helped by Jamis and then he ends up killing. It's like, oh, I forgot about that because he's prescience that but his prescience is like he can see possible futures. It's like Doctor Strange. He can't see the one and only future. He sees possible futures and he's able to look into the future where he learns how to fight like a Fremen from Jamis. And then he's able to fight Jamis and kill him. That's the stuff that I need to know. To explain. You know that's, that's also, uh, you know, uh, you guys are out west, so it's more acceptable here than in Tennessee. But, and you also notice that the ending credit streams, like, it's probably really good to maybe be on some hallucinogenic drugs, like mushrooms, because Frank Herbert did a lot of mushrooms, and, the like, the, the, the eyes are blue, and the spice causes you to be blue, just because he, he took that idea from psy- psilocybin mushrooms. Like... I, full disclosure on on the first watch I was I was on an edible and it was really fun to watch the end credit scenes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I think that I, I do get what you're saying about maybe this movie should have been better on shrooms. I'm going off of a yeah. different uh, experience, yeah, totally. completely. But last week, and I went to. Are you familiar with the band Ween? Yes. Yeah, my girlfriend loves them. I went to go see Ween last Friday for my birthday. Hell yes. And it was the first time. I've been a lot, you know, for 20 years I've been a fan of these guys, but I've never seen them live. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea what the crowd was going to be like. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like when I went into this, I I really just didn't know what I was expecting. And it ended up being very much like a, a, almost like a deadhead kind of vibe. Like a Grateful Dead Mm -hmm. jam band Mm -hmm. type of vibe, which I was not expecting. So I totally get what you're saying about like my wife and I looked at each other like, I think we we missed out on a certain ingredient (laughs) that we should have brought with us. Because, you know, that's, we know next time Mm -hmm. (laughs) for the next, the next Ween show, if you see me, my eyes might be a little dilated. I'm just going to say that. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. The one last thing that I'll say about Dune, and I think that it's it's even more so kind of what I was getting at yeah. is, and Steve, I think you'll appreciate this. Uh, we were talking about, before we started recording, we were talking about the comic Preacher. Mm-hmm. And anyone that's listened to us for any extended amount of time knows that, you know, we had the show The Word and we yeah. talked about the show Preacher. And that's pretty much what we did. I mean, it's the exact same thing. We knew the entire story before that show even mm-hmm. came yes. out. And we we're able to pick it apart mm-hmm. and kind of know, like, there's a lot of things that are going to be lost on people that haven't read the, the yes. book because... They change the story quite a bit, Mm -hmm. but they give you these little hints of, oh, I know what they're talking about there. And those are the kind of things that I think would have made me appreciate this movie more Mm -hmm. is just that deep love for it and knowing what I'm getting myself into. But I can't fault this movie at all. I do really Mm do. I IMAX made the difference for me. I really think Mm -hmm. that I would have had a completely different experience if I watched it on HBO Max. I can't wait to hear um, this rating. (laughs) No, I mean, I'm going to be fair with it, man. I think just from where I'm at. Uh Uh-huh. And everything that I've talked about, I'm going to kind of stay in the in the middle, a little over, because I do appreciate the the work that was put in this movie, the acting, the actors that they got for this movie, and just the special effects okay. in general. And again, knowing it's a bigger story, uh, I know I'm babbling, I, I apologize, but I'm going to go ahead and give this one, a, to me, what seems like a fair rating, a three out of five, mm-hmm. Chris Knives, carved from the teeth of the Shai Hulu. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's just cool, because they always have to cut, they always have to cut themselves, because whenever they unsheath their blades... They ha- they have to draw blood, so they have to cut themselves if they don't kill anybody. Sorry, I'm a nerd. That's okay. <laughs> no. We're gonna have, to, dude. We're gonna have to have you back on soon. But but question: Do you think Preacher would have worked as a film, or was it lucky that yes. it got? Yeah. Okay. I think Preacher totally could have worked as a film, but it would have been. Uh, at least a trilogy. Okay. okay. Because there's just so much story to tell. Like, I really can't recommend that book enough to you. I know I probably sound like a broken record to people that listen to us all the time. I need to read that. I need to read Why the Last Man. I need to read a lot of things. I need to and you'll, go read yeah. Neil Gaiman's Run of Eternals because things would probably like, make a lot more sense. And you could do that on your awesome tour coming up. Uh, yeah, because there's so much time to read on the road. Um, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's something to think about. If you're going to see Volk, ladies and gentlemen, Bring this man some there books. There we go. Yeah. A lot of driving to do, a lot of road time. Bring him some books. Well, Eternals, you heard it. But here, here's here's the horrible curse: is that I get car sick reading. Never mind. Oh, okay. Don't well bring him books for the hotel. Later. Yeah, bring, bring him, him audio books. Books. <laughs> Bring audio books. Even better. Uh, audio little, books are good. You, coupons, coupons for what's that thing? Audible. Yeah. 
There we go. They're working hard to, to entertain you folks, so give them something back. You should go yeah. see Volk. They're on tour right now. Uh, Chris, with the Necromantics, is that correct? Necromantics and the uh, Delta Bombers, who are also awesome. a great, awesome band from Las Vegas. We were just on tour with them in a band called Hillbilly Casino. Uh, they're awesome, amazing dudes, and we're so excited to be back with them. And it would be great to see any any folks. Uh, you don't have to bring the, – the best gift is just to come – and say hi and hang out. Like that's awesome. just that's, that's the coolest thing. As a as we've talked earlier in this podcast, greatest gift for an artist is just that little dopamine boost of like, hey, what you're doing is relevant and worthwhile. That says it all, man. Chris, thank you so much for joining us, man. I really appreciate your time. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. This has been awesome. I'm excited to come back again soon and try to like when you guys over on Dune. I will see. I'll send you guys a copy of the book Dune. I'm, let's I'm, do this I'm thing, just, man. Like, I'm gonna, I'm let, gonna read it. Let's have a book club. That's just my go. podcast, Chris's book club. Where Heroes Chris, of Volk. <laughs> yeah, Heroes of Volk. <laughs> Can I ask a uh, selfish question? Sure. Are you going to be selling any of those uh, those cash infused vinyls? So that's month? that's the sad thing with the the money making thing. Band or Romanus Records. Those are like one offs. Like those, okay. those oh. he only does them once because it's like a collector's <sighs> thing. Because they're. Like, 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 if you think there is a huge Dune or like, like the Deadhead Ween thing, there is a vinyl community that is obsessed with vinyls, and those okay. people snatched they that that's like the cool thing about ours. It was like the one that sold out the fastest. It was like less than a that's couple awesome. of minutes because okay. there are just Such dedicated. A vinyl. There's just a dedicated fan base, and he only does them once because obviously the vinyl people they want that kind of like collector's item status. Okay. Totally. Um, yeah. I mean, he makes a lot of cool ones. Like he does, like for King Gizzard Lizard Wizard, he does like a lot of amazing designs. He's actually, I think, on record as the guy who made the first. Oh, I'm talking. This guy is Chris Banta. He runs Romance Records. Uh, of a, also a really cool duo called Brother or Brother. Um, but uh, he's on record as making the first LED light, functional LED light vinyl. Holy cow! That you can control with a little remote control. Another that's cool thing to maybe wild. do some hallucinogenic hallucinogenics too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome, um, man. But uh, I'm still trying to talk Steve into taking ayahuasca. I know it's a bit of a stretch, but uh, uh, I think it's. I think I read. Re- you shouldn't do. I think it's not. Don't do ayahuasca because it's like very. It only grows in that certain part. I might be confusing one drug for the other, um, but it's only grown in a certain part that's like sacred to like a native american tribe so oh get, get your you want to get your mescaline from a certain source i think it's okay. ayahuasca that you shouldn't do ayahuasca you should uh do they have peyote or something like that okay i'm okay. pretty sure this was educational steve we this learned something educational but now i listen to a lot of podcasts on the road i listen to you guys i like i listen to a lot of stuff on the road so, we're gonna, I, dude, do you understand we're going to nerd out the next time you can? Or just music, a music pod. What's our next nerd out thing? It's just music pod. I'll, I'll do the rig rundown. Um, we can talk about uh, rig distortions oh, and big muffs. No, but also tour. Like when you come back, you got to give us some tour juice. Yes, some I want crazy yeah. road stories. Yeah, That's, road stories. Yeah. And I was ready to ask that this time, but I knew we had some movies to talk about. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. But I'll come back as soon as as soon as you guys want me to. Um, I'm actually doing. I'm actually on Joe Stark's um, podcast next month. Um, Oh, nice! I'd love to hear that. But I'll just. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll. You just. Yeah, but I'll come on to you guys. We'll have a whole thing about what's road life's like and how. You know, I we don't. Elliot and I even has a song about it's like we don't really understand how. Artists before were able to just do tons of drugs to get fucked up. Like when all you need is just to just be a DIY touring band because that fucks you up enough. (laughs) That's it. And here's the thing. We're going to have to get her on too. Yeah. Of course. I promise next time uh, I will will get Elliot on this show um, for y'all. Yeah. Sounds great. You heard it, Dan. I have heard. I'm going to hold you to it. All right. Once we head out here, I want to play one of the Volk songs. Do you have a preference? Something you Me? want us to hear? Yeah. Do you have a preference of something you'd want everyone to hear? Oh. Um, I mean, last time I played Welcome to Cashville. Well, we like to, you know, we know we're like a fun, hard to the balls to the wall band. So maybe it'd be cool to show off something else that we do. Uh, the softer side of folk. Um, maybe, if you don't mind, uh, like uh, no, uh, not it's at all. a song, Old Palestine, which is about my hometown of Palestine, Texas. 
Um, they they get offended when you call it Palestine. Uh, so hence I I, I, I called it Old Palestine because fuck that place. Of course. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's a okay. it's it's probably like the song if I'm talking about like all the stuff we were talking about like art, you know, trying to call out injustices. That's probably the song I feel like most proud of where I maybe get too close to that. Well, very cool. Because see, originally I was just going to kind of cut that and then just say what we we're going to play. But see, you just explained it so well. Now I'm going to keep it in. <laughs> well, it's a so it's about a it's about a, a sh- like a, a, a crippled. Uh, East Texas town that it's an economic resources left with the train station um, when the train stopped going through there. And then Walmart came in and closed all the old businesses. So it's the story of small town America. And it's about how people don't deal with those issues and end up blaming the wrong people and get stuck in bullshit like the current state of the nation kind of. Right. Of course. (laughs) Right back full yeah, circle. There you go. <laughs> see, you see how I brought it back. That's the that's the teacher in me. I'm, Bring it all back because you're a genius. In, no, conclusion. in conclusion, yes, I like that. Kids, I like that. Homework. Um, homework. You know, work cited. Uh, maybe t- you know how to get it all in there right before the bell rings. Yeah. Uh, do a little research on a thing called polio and be thankful that you don't have to deal with that shit anymore. Get vaccinated, folks, because I still want to have a music career. By the way, real quick, I just want to ask you one question. Has that been an issue for you when you've been torn anywhere? Or is that, uh, is it, how's that working out? Talking about, like, when we're talking about the Democrats folding and the whole nation just not having a coherent message, it's just all over the place of where you play. Um, it's a little annoying sometimes when we'll get to a venue and they're, like, checking patrons' vaccination cards, but then they don't check ours. Um, and then some people just don't care. Um, some, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just all over the world. It's like, I don't know. It's like, am I supposed to be wearing a mask at this point? I don't know. Um, I do need to, oh shit. I gotta do that Monday. I gotta get my booster shot. Um, <laughs> cause I had the J and J. So do I. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I guess it's, I think also the, the narrative, like, unfortunately, I guess where I am is like, we have to accept that it's an endemic. It's not pandemic anymore. Um, I just, would encourage people to do what helps them feel safe and how what helps them make other people feel safe. Because another for me and Carl Stewart, vaccinations don't work. Vaccines do. You are getting a vaccine for your old grandmother or somebody else's that you will never meet. Grandmother. Um, exactly. Stop being such a selfish prick. That'd be perfect. <laughs> yes. Stop it, being man. such a selfish prick. <laughs> Love yeah. it. That says it all right That's going to be the title of our, our episode. <laughs> That's my go. subtitle for sure. Hey, hey uh, Chris, where can people find you outside of the road? Where can we, if they want to learn about Volk and listen to Volk, where can we find you? Um, we're, we're all scattered on social media. The website is livevolk.com because of poor internet name choices back in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but we're like Volk hashtag band. We'll find you'll find us. No Volk, uh, lower hyphen. What's oh shit? I blanked on the what's that called? Underscore. Underscore. Thank you. <laughs> um, Volk underscore band on Instagram and on Twitter. And I think there's a TikTok, but I don't really understand how TikTok works yet. Um, so we just kind of throw junk content on there. Um, you feel free to hit Steve up. He'll tell you all about TikTok. Oh, uh, He's oh, a superstar God. on there. TikTok just makes me so sad. It's just like I don't. I'm old. I'm so. <laughs> I'm so old, and this is so far from what I intended to be doing with myself as, as a on. wannabe artist. Um, uh, you are an artist, not wannabe. Ah, uh, well, when I can pay all my bills with, with as an artist, it took me a long it's time to. to happen, it's, it took me a long time to be able to say I was a teacher. Um, so it'll probably take a long time to be able to say that too. Um, you're on your way, brother. I'm calling it. But yeah, we're, Facebook would be live Volk. YouTube is Volk underscore band. And if anybody does watch it already, you see that we just kind of treat it as this. This is silly, so we're going to be silly stuff. Um, uh, and try and you can see us in all of our silly outfits that we wear. As I said, I don't know if we recorded that part, but I got a new jacket that specifies what I feel about Ted Cruz. Um, if you want to see that on the road and I will wear that fucker in Texas, I might get shot, but if there's, there's, you know, that's an honorable death. Please wear it. You got to come to the show to see what it says. Yeah. You got to come to the show to see what it says. Yeah. Um, uh, we wear sparkly outfits. We play loud music. 
I jump off the stage, even though I'm six foot two and, and out of shape and uncoordinated. Um, <laughs> and, and just try to like, you know, leave, you know, do my best Angus, uh, Ang, uh, Angus Young impression. I love that. Can't wait to see it, man. Can't wait. All and again, right. thank you so much, Chris, for joining us. It's been fun. Thank man. you I had a great so much. Time. This has been such an honor to be be with you guys, and I, I really appreciate you guys. And it, I, I've said it to each podcast that I've been able to be on. Finding this community, it's just, it's really awesome. That's this is one of the pluses of the internet and social media is finding, can in 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 finding connection and like what you guys do is art. You know, like this is an artistic in Denver. It's it's not a traditional thing, but it's like. It's a valuable thing um, because, you know, as Stan Lee said, like, even if it doesn't, if it's not high art, it's, it's, it's what helps get people through the day. And that's pretty tough in late stage capitalism. Appreciate it, bro. You yeah. ain't lying. Yeah. People, you've already heard it from everybody else. We've had a wonderful show as normal. I love you guys. The next voice you're going to hear is the man himself, Dan. That's me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for listening to episode 174 with the one Chris Lowe of the super band Volk. That's right. I called it a super band. Don't correct me. That's how I feel about it. I think Chris and Volk are doing an outstanding job of getting their name out there and everything like that. But for anyone that has never heard of them, I really, really want you guys to listen to this band because they're fun. They got something to say. And it's just not your normal everyday bullshit that you hear. This is this is a this is a serious band that's doing some serious shit. And I, I can't wait to see you guys live. So I'm not going to butter you up too much, my friend. But again, thank you so much. No, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a week. We'll be back soon with episode 175 because that's how it works with numbers. You guys be good to yourselves. Be good to the people around you. Peace.